Yo, good evening, everybody. Hi, everyone. Ho, hey, -o. what's up, Lodra High, Satellite, Not a Roguelike, Silver Mike, Bacon, thank you for subscribing for 29 months, Zetsubo-san, thank you for subscribing for 32, Jesus. What's up, Manic? Hi, everybody. How's it going? God, it feels like it's been a million years since I last saw you. Um, happy Tuesday, I guess. Um, hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good weekend. My Last couple of days have certainly been eventful for me. Uh, <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, yeah, I last, I last saw you all on Saturday. Um, and then Sunday was much packing. Again, I'm really glad you can't see this room because it's, it, it is a mess. Um, and then yesterday, I was at a baseball game. We, we packed for the earlier part of the day. And then in the evening, uh, we went to an Angels game over in Anaheim, and had a wonderful time there. That was great. Uh, the Angels sucked really bad uh, for, like, the first half of the game, and then tried to rally and almost pulled it off. They totally teed up a, a, a hero moment for uh, for their, their star hitter, Otani, um, the bottom of the ninth, but couldn't pull it off, unfortunately. Yeah, the Angels were the Angels. Yeah, I remember I told I told another Discord I was on. They were talking sports stuff, and I was, they, they were talking about baseball teams specifically and how much a bunch of them suck. And I was like, I'm going to see the Angels soon. Is how bad am I supposed to feel about that? And they're like, Otani's good. It's just a shame he's not on a better team. <laughs> so yeah, but it was great. I I have discovered I really genuinely like going to baseball games. Like I find them I find them very enjoyable and very relaxing. And you know when. On the rare, at, the, at those rare moments when exciting things do happen, it's, it's pretty fun, so. All right, but I can't, uh, I can't ramble about myself for too long because there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, and uh, y'all can certainly tell because I see, all the, I see all the dragon coins come flowing in. So, um, first of all, community night stuff is open. If you wanna throw in coins to make me do stuff in August, that's what the current challenge is for, so toss away. Um, we have a new option for democracy. We have new nominations open, like I said we would last week. Uh, I wanna go ahead and start the long, probably two week process of picking what we're gonna play after Legend of Mana. And I want story-driven games. Um, I know this is extremely subjective. There are games tagged as story-driven on Steam. There are games that are known for their stories. I know a lot of y'all are really attached to certain games because of their stories. All of those are fair game. Um, by, by the same token, I like the nominations are gonna be a lot more subjective to me this time. I'm not necessarily going to go with the games that get the most overall nominations. I'm probably just gonna pick three from the list that I'm interested in trying. So just toss them out there and and make them good. What's up, Cragger? What's up, Not a Roguelike? Silver Mike, Hoink. Hi, everybody, jeez. What's up, Trogdar? Oh, Planescape. I, Plane, I, I have a short list of games that I regret never finishing and Planescape Torment, uh, is one of them. Do double noms help at all? Yes, yes they will. I will, I will first consider the games that get multiple nominations from different people. Um, so yeah, if if y'all, if like 10 different people nominate one game, yes, I will I will consider it very strongly. And I'll put it on the list unless it's, unless I'm just like, 
Mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, a couple caveats, because uh, I did I did see the discussion that exploded on on Discord uh, in the last hour. Um, I saw somebody mentioned. Hang on, let me let me check and make sure I'm not making shit up here. Uh, somebody mentioned Edith Finch. We've actually talked about Edith Finch before, and the consensus for that one is that I I wouldn't stream it just because the tone of that one um, would be a bit too a bit too much. For what we tend to do on this channel, we'll we'll do we'll do emotional stuff. We can do challenging stuff, but I wanna I wanna kind of avoid like really really dark or really yeah exactly. I, I remember I remember Manic bringing this up saying they just straight up would not watch Edith Finch, and I kind of want to avoid games like that. Um, another example off the top of my head, I personally am a fan of I have no mouth and I must scream, but there is there is a litany of reasons. <laughs> why we would not stream that game, okay? It is definitely story-driven, but it would be a bad, bad call for this channel. So, uh, yeah. Wanna watch guy grab a shower and dinner? Ah, well, Kono, it, unless unless you take three hours for it, we'll still be around. Said Franbo is okay. Uh, Franbo would be fine. I have played through Franbo, so I know what to expect. Um, and I mean, for, for God's sake, we did Little Misfortune. It's, I would, I would say far more palatable than Little Misfortune. It's, it's got some gore, it's got some weird stuff in it, but I, overall, I think it's a really good game. And I think it's worth doing. Um, yikes forever. <laughs> oh, and I'm afraid when you missed it, uh, I think Saturday was the first day I had it. Um, we have some new sound alerts, by the way, if you want to play with those. If it take three hours, it means dinner went very well, nice. Have you played Grease? I have. I have played Grease. Uh, we that was that was a game we streamed pretty early on. I think should be up on our YouTube channel. Little misfortune wasn't even distressing. It was just met. No, don't be sorry. I, I I echo a lot of the sentiments chat had about that one. It was over overall a bit of a disappointment for me, but it definitely had some dark parts, um, especially when they're making light of that one guy that hung himself. <clears throat> So what kind of stuff have you thrown in here? Let me let me go back and check. Uncharted Waters 2, that one comes up a lot. I remember that. Call of the Sea. Um, Observation. Titan, yeah, Titanfall 2, I've heard, ha actually has a really, really good story. I would consider that. Sleeping Dogs. Uh, Sleeping Dogs is a really good game. It's been ages since I last played that. And also ages... I, I, I never played uh, the re-release of it. Planescape, naturally. I don't know what Crystar is. Yeah, everyone raves about Titanfall 2, and I, I, I really I need to get around to that one eventually. Um, Ras, good to see you. Good evening. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. I thought you're dodging us tonight. No, that was that was last night. Last night was last night was bases ball night. So, thought the campaign was great in Titanfall 2. I don't remember thinking about the actual story. <laughs> well, it's also short. I know it's short, so. That's that's another thing. Short games are way easier to commit to because it means we're not playing them for like months and months and months. So if if we're gonna pick something long, it it needs to be something like a like Planescape or Sleeping Dogs or something something that's like solid. And another thing to consider, I, I promise we'll get to NES games tonight. Don't worry about that. Um, I wanted to mention this to y'all because I. I Every once in a while I get introspective and start thinking about the things that we play on on the channel and, and what kind of stuff is popular and what kind of stuff I like doing. Um, and thinking back on some of the recent games that we've played, I think the stuff that's the most fun for everyone on here, for me, for the viewers, for everyone, and this is going to sound... I appreciate the effort y'all go to to remind me that sound alerts were a mistake. Uh, so, the thing, the, the games that seem to be the most, yes, America is here. <laughs> well done, library man. Well done. Um, games where things happen. And I know that's, it sounds really stupid on its face, but like, I think back to stuff like, like Horizon Zero Dawn, 
where you had a really active story where a lot of there were a lot of twists and turns and even when we weren't engaging with the story just running around the world st stuff would just like come leaping out of the trees at us and and tear us up um prey was a pretty good stuff happens game a little it had its slow parts but you know some of the some of the typhon uh encounters and stuff were pretty were pretty exciting um Really good example, I think, King of Dragon Pass. Um, King of Dragon Pass had a lot of stuff happening because it was basically an event-based game where, where, you know, every time you would pass time, something would happen for you to, like, decide on. Um, and that gave, that gave me decisions to make, that gave chat stuff to discuss. That was an example of a game where things happened. The inverse of that, a, a game where I don't really, I wouldn't really characterize it as things happening, would be Spiritfarer. I really enjoyed playing Spiritfarer, but in terms of streaming, like we had to go make stuff happen. Um, we had to, we had to go seek it out, and we kind of had to make the most of the events when they would happen. So, yeah, just, just as food for thought. And now I have to catch up to chat because y'all left me behind. Um. The shitty governor of my shitty state has decided to cut off the expanded benefits early, not getting an extra 300 a week. Oh my god, Manic. It's unbelievable that people that like people are just granted the power to do that arbitrarily with no consideration for how it's gonna affect people. It's honestly criminal. <sighs> well, good luck. Good luck with Matt, that manic. Yeah, Spirit Fair was definitely a little slow. Hopefully, hopefully what I'm saying here makes sense. Like, there are games where things happen. You know, where, where every time we play, something new and something interesting happens. Yeah, Spirit Fair was a great bonding experience. I, I do agree with that. I don't, uh, believe me, I don't regret streaming it at all. Um, Legend of Mana is another game where we kind of have to go out and make things happen. Things don't really just happen. I mean, sometimes when the characters get together, like, things happen, and that's pretty cool. But it's much more common that we have to figure out what the game wants to put together a string of events to make something happen. So it's definitely the games where we just, we load into them and like crazy, crazy things start happening uh, that, that work better. So gimmick domination, Death Stranding. Death in Vinland might be worth a look for a game with story and is event driven. I've heard of that one. It also looks really interesting. Mon is much, not much fun to watch if you don't care about the game. I feel like that's a that's a that's a broader statement about streaming in general. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to enjoy streaming if you're not into the game being streamed, and I totally get that. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, it keep us keep us appraised of what's going on, um, and hopefully, if you need any help, there's something we can do. So, what was that? You guys just a gingerbread chat. What's up, Vesty? I see you there. Oh, and somebody was asking, oh, Vexner was asking about how sound alerts. Yeah, they should, they're not a channel point thing, they're bits. Um, it's it's underneath the stream window. I just, I, I wanna reassure you all. The only reason they're not, uh, the only reason they're not channel points is because if they were channel points, this stream would be 24 seven Cotton Eye Joe. You know that, I know that, I'm just being real here. I have to make you spend money so that there are slight breaks in between bouts of Cotton Eye Joe and Yikes Forever. It did take me a while, yes. You're still many steps ahead. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks to Winamp. It's 24 7 Cotton Eye Joe over here. How expensive it actually is. I, I, put, I put Cotton Eye Joe at a dollar. You have to cough up an entire American dollar. To, to inflict Cotton Eye Joe upon us. Yeah, 25 bits is 25 cents, yeah. How long is the clip? I, I don't like where this line of questioning is going, Vesty. <laughs> I really, I really don't. I'm going, I'm going to attempt to get tonight's stream started now that we're, now that we're 20 minutes into it and, and we've discussed this stuff at length. So hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Power Hours. Uh... That was okay. Okay, you get. 
That's good. That was good. No, no, that was that was a keeper. That was, that was a good one. <laughs> Imagine streaming a video game who does that. It was an effort. What's up, grown fodder? Haven't been for Cotton Eye Joe. I've been married a long time ago. <laughs> Am I employee of the month? Yeah, we'll hang up. Maybe when I get to the new place, I can have a little, uh, a little, a little chatter of the month thing up on the wall behind me. Okay. Anyway, um, believe it or not. We've actually made it through a whole three volumes of uh, Nintendo Power, starting in the heady year of 1988. We're done with 1988. We did it. Six months down. It's gone. It's over. We are now in 1989, January, February. And I gotta say, um, this issue looks like it's going to rehash a lot of stuff that we already looked at, which is unfortunate. I guess they didn't have a whole lot to work with the first year or two of Nintendo Power's life, so some of the stuff we might just kind of be skirting past. I feel like I feel like it's really the video shorts and pack watch that are gonna be the big hit of this series, because people are gonna jump all over that stuff before it gets proper uh, proper features in the magazine, so. Uh, you requested John Elway last time you were here, did it get played? Yes, yes it did, it was sad. It was depressing. Um, it was... Yeah, what did we, what did we, we had a really, what was it? <laughs> no, overestimated is 10 seconds, three hours. <laughs> I, I, I would, I, you know what? I, I think I could, I think I could manage to accept a thousand dollars worth of Cotton Eye Joe. Not to mention it. Um... Yeah, John Elway was like, it was like somebody ported an old Atari game onto the NES. It was awful. I need to play the first one, two, two Sesame Streets to understand Sesame Street one, two, three. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Let's start Twitch stream. The only place caught my Joe now. It has to be money fueled. Yeah, that's the thing. You have to give a bunch of money to to, to Twitch. Nobody wants to do that. You mistook the name of something way wilder than what it actually was. You know, in addition, we did we did do John Elway, um, but we also played. Uh, we we also did. It's like brain chat. I'm not gonna be able to manage coherent thoughts tonight, as as if I normally can. Um, we played a we played a football game from S and K, which was actually really fun. Except they seemed to have no concept of how football actually worked. Because there was no way to do long passes. Um, but it was at least more entertaining than John Elway. John Elway sucked. Can't support this outlaw much. <laughs> Cheating you counter stream. I, I'm sorry, Vesti. I'm sorry for my impertinence. Okay, so. Features this time. WrestleMania. Apparently we asked for it. And unfortunately, we got it. Um, they put that awful Captain Nintendo uh, fanfic at the front of the magazine this time, but apparently it's the conclusion. So, I don't know, mixed blessings, maybe? And then there's Sesame Street 1, 2, 3, which you haven't touched on yet. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Don't waste coins on this, I played it already. I streamed the whole thing. One of my prouder stream moments, if we can be honest here. Uh, Zelda 2 went shockingly well for us. <laughs> that was the best part of the stream last time. You didn't finish your thought about the direction of the stream. I, I did, I basically did. Um, I was just, I, w I was offering suggestions um, since we're nominating games right now, and I'm looking for, for uh, story-driven games. People might want to lean more towards games where things happen spontaneously, um, as opposed to stuff where you have to go out and find things to happen. So. Little Nightmares 2 is starting to see in an hour. Let us know how it goes. Nice humble brag about being Dark Link. It's not even a humble brag. I beat that motherfucker with no cheese. I just took his ass to school. And I if I could get that on a badge, I would wear that shit every day. I am still proud of that. <laughs> I'm not. Alright, cool. <laughs> so anyway, that's Zelda 2. We've been there, we did that. Uh I nominated Borderlands. Was that the pre-sequel? Because I hate myself? Great. Uh that's not happening. Uh Skate or Die. We already did Skate or Die. Ugh. Howard Nestor Counselor is classified Marble Madness. I can tell you right now we're not going to be escaping the wrath of Marble Madness. God. I'm gonna be this guy, Marble Madness on the NES. Yeah, it is! It's brutal. It's awful. 
<laughs> evidently hate the rest of us too. See, my nominations, I kind of did them for the stream. Sorry, I saw you type them in. I didn't see if you actually, if it was like a dragon coin. Oh, well, chat has, chat has progressed far, too far and too fast. God, you people already put little, little, little princess and Carto. Okay. Both of those are good ideas. I know little, 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 I know you've been campaigning for a little lily princess for a while, probably because there's no way on earth I'll be able to pronounce it and I'll be stumbling over it constantly. Carto looks really neat. Um, I, I know of that one. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, um, when when Dominic shows up, let's dogpile him about uh, community night this month. I was gonna ping him in Discord, but I figured I'd just wait until he might be busy right now. He might he might have some stuff going on, so I figured I'd just wait until he shows up in the stream. We got all month, so no worries. Uh, yeah, Marvel Randomness. We did Operation Wolf last time. It was pretty fun. It was all right. More Nintendo football games. I think it might just be the same three that they previewed in video shorts last time. Metal Gear again, and then video shorts pack watch. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil those. Those will be the excitement for next time. Oh my God! It's WrestleMania, y'all. The greatest WWF wrestlers of all, of all time. Clearly, no, no other will ever compete with the likes of Bam Bam Bigelow and the Honky Tonk Man. That's, these are faces, right? It's kind of hard to tell. And the cream rises to the crop. That is Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant, Bam Bam Bigelow, Honky Tonk Man, uh, Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Just talk shit about Bam Bam? So what if I did? What if I did Silverman? Finish the rest of the cat, oh my god. <laughs> it is technically story driven. <laughs> we did do uh, we did do Tecmo Bowl. Eventually, we're gonna do Super Tecmo Bowl, and I know that's the one people are really looking forward to. Never before such raw power and skill. I would do. I, I want y'all to know. I would do the Randy Savage voice for this whole thing, but I would not be able to speak for like the next week if I committed to that. So. Can one ring contain the explosive talents of the top wrestlers of the World Wrestling Federation, each with his own special skills? I don't know how how Macho Man Randy Savage did that voice all the time, without like coughing up blood constantly. Video games Andre the Giant doesn't have chronic health problems and can do Princess Bride sequels forever. Uh, the magic of video games. Do it, Coward. You're just moving into a new house this week. No big deal. Yes. For anyone who missed it, we're moving. I took tomorrow and Thursday off from work, and I'm moving to a new house. So. Thursday night, we should be streaming from the new place. Uh, assuming everything works out. And uh, we should. We should. Drugs. Like how Hulk Hogan is glowing. <laughs> this is before he lost his halo. Uh, each wrestler is gifted his own special skills and maneuvers. As in all great sports, winning starts with a lot of hard training. Master the fundamentals for each other. Feel the tension, sense the excitement, smell the air, bask in the glow. Victory rests in your hands. Nice. Oh my god. I'm gonna move myself down here so y'all can drink in these portraits. Like, holy shit. Thank you, Rask. I appreciate that. You sure you don't need a break with moving? The oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. My kids started a summer camp sort of thing. Um, it's at this, uh, it's at this study place downtown. Um, downtown Torrance. Uh, that keeps them busy during the day. So today was our first day, me and my wife working from home without the kids orbiting us. And just... You fucking drew that Andre. <laughs> Why the long face, buddy? A steady play is a god. Artifact of history, this is before. Yes, this is before it was WWE. I think it, was, it changed to WWE mid 90s, right? Cause I think I was, I think I was still watching it. I was watching it in middle school and I think it changed when I was watching it. Was it 2002? Oh Jesus, that's way later than I thought. So it's still WWF when I was watching it. <laughs> Dinner with Andre the Giant. <laughs> Picture Jesus, the old lady painted over. <laughs> oh my god. All Hogan's boobs are so shiny. Well, at least they got that part right. Wrestling the World Wildlife Fund was as dramatic. Could get way bloodier, that's true. 
Hulk Hogan, the first name in professional wrestling. When the Hulkster's signing, okay. We don't care about Hulk Hogan. Um, his name is Andre the Giant. They don't come any batteries, man. Great strength and stamina. One solid kick from his size. 22 boot. Ruin an opponent's hold it. Look at that boot. A massive foot. Get Andre's trademark giant footprint when it appears on the screen. It'll increase his already awesome. So this has pickups. If you see Hulk's golden X during a bout, try to get it like cheers from his enduring fans. This will help to revitalize Hulk. Huh. I like this section subtitled A Massive Foot. Yeah. Yeah, not really, not much, not, not terribly accurate on this either. So apparently they have like special moves too. A, B, A, and a up and down. Back to opponent, A and B, A and B running moves, turnbuckle moves using B. Uh, it seems like some are missing some, like... Most of them don't have a B running move. Only Bam Bam Bigelow, in fact. I had to draw them with, from word of mouth storytelling. <laughs> the hairline is accurate. <laughs> Used to him wearing the well, yeah, yeah. As as time went on, Hulk kind of covered up more and more of himself. I guess as as the dad bod kind of set in. But yeah, the bandana and the big glasses and yeah. Oh my. Oh 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 my. Oh my yes. Ted <laughs> Dibiase looks like a hobbit. <laughs> That <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> is Randy's mouth just open. He's like, it's like the very okay. Randy Savage here is the very definition of gormless. Like, that's not very macho of him. This is just Elvis. I don't. I don't know. I like. I can't think. I don't think I've ever seen Honky Tonk Man offhand, but I don't know how much of a likeness this is. And then this is, um, this is basically a dude from Mad Magazine with a haircut. That's how he breathes. <laughs> this is literally saw a wrestling ad where Ted DiBiase appears from here. I, I told you all last time, I actually saw Ted DiBiase at E3 in the mid 2000s. Uh, promoting some wrestling game. I'm not even sure he was in it, but I guess it's it's not terribly expensive to get a hold of the ten million dollar the million dollar man now. Ten million. He <laughs> 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 looks like a coke bloat. It's like they only had a honky tonk man action figure to go off of. Yeah, it's super like super plasticky. The mullet dollar man. <laughs> Randy can't breathe through his nose anymore. Too much permanently intended cocaine. <laughs> it's like crusted in there. <laughs> so let's see. Ted DiBiase, Ted DiBiase wants to pick up dollars, naturally. Honky Tonk Man wants to pick up a guitar. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow wants to pick up flames, like fire itself. And Randy Savage wants his shades. That makes sense. I mentioned this before, more media needs to employ people just to make up art about stuff for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, stuff like this, I, I feel like stuff like this is a totally lost art. Like, where are you going, where are you going to see this kind of magic these days, you know? Unless, I guess, unless you go digging deep into like DeviantArt or like art Twitter or something. Sciences are clogged with ground up when Jimsy snorted. Oh yeah. They did, oh, I can't see it really, but they did a pretty good job with uh, Honky Tonk Man's hair in game. Here. Read the description of the guitar. Getting the guitar will strike a nice chord for Honky Tonk Man. Take note of the amount of energy he receives as he becomes sharp enough to knock his opponent flat. Hey, 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 Manic. Hey, Manic, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Big oof. That was a trap. The section entitled Dollar. The Million Dollar Man will feel revitalized and is able to get the big dollar sign that goes by it. Naturally. I'm, I'm, I, I guess the NES couldn't handle rendering an entire case of cash or something. <laughs> oh God. And that's it, oh God. Oh no, that was it. 
Oh fuck. No. Oh god, it's so long. Holy shit, check out Link here. Oh god, okay. All right, all right. People people threw coins at this. I, I have to do this. Reading a sexy voice? No. I won't be able to respect myself in the morning. AFK a few minutes. <laughs> I heard this bapped in Nintendo. That's my cue to leave. All right, all right, gang. We'll be we'll be we'll be back to games in like 20 minutes. Hang in there. <clears throat> all right, so in case you forgot about part 1, Brett Randalls, a member of Nintendo's R&D team, was accidentally endowed with special powers. The accident also brought to life the Mother Brain from Metroid. Brett and Tara have just discovered their friend Max, a terrified life-size Princess Zelda at the mercy of a larger-than-life Ganon, who is in turn being enlisted by Mother Brain in her attempt to... Uh, you'll find out. I remember to hydrate. Yep. Here we go. Story-driven game noms immediately canceled on completion of Captain Nintendo. Somebody nominated this! Someone, someone actually nominated this as, as the, as the story-driven game. No, no shadows, no. Of course it was you, Vexor. No shadows. This, this is a totally different Captain Nintendo. This is not, <laughs> help me deal with my insomnia. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. We've been, as, as a channel, as, as, as a channel goes, the metrics have been really good lately. We, we can take a hit for one night. It'll, it'll be okay. Picking this over mana. <laughs> All right. Oh man, exclaimed Brett. Not Ganon. Not Ganon. Turning to Terra, he confided. Terra, I don't know what to do. These are the baddest villains, and yet I'm just one guy. Brett, replied Terra, calmly taking his hand. I don't know too much about these new power of yours, or even what's going on here, but I do know this. You are the captain of your fate. You have great powers that are totally unique. Look at yourself in the mirror. You are already more than just one guy. You are Captain Nintendo. I'm still in absolute shock that this wasn't written by someone on the staff named Brett. Blows my fucking mind. Brett Randalls turned to see his reflection in the tinted picture window of the reception area. He gazed at the inspiring figure in the glass, adorned with the costume he, himself, had designed. In that fleeting moment, he realized his awesome destiny. Tara was right. Brett Randalls was now Captain Nintendo. And now, Captain Nintendo was needed. And... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wasn't one chapter this shit enough for you? People threw money at this! Fake, imaginary channel money, but they threw money at it. I have to, I have to respect the hustle. <laughs> it starts a fart noise or something. Ah, <laughs> oh, turning from the glass, he stared bravely at the terrifying spectacle before him as he took a step forward toward the perilously powerful monstrosities ahead and without turning his gaze from them, Captain Nintendo remarked, you know, this is turning into a really long day. Concentrating, Captain Nintendo raised his arms shoulder high and pointed his fingers at the terrifying beast in front of him. Fingers? All of them? All of them? Before Brett could fire any kind of blast, Ganon disappeared. What? Thought Captain. Where did he... Oof! Something unseen had knocked Captain Nintendo several feet across the floor and onto his costume keister. He was so shocked he didn't even hear Terra, who by this time was trying to administer first aid to his unconscious best pal, Max, scream his name. Though considerably dazed, he could sense that Ganon was coming toward him. Instinctively, Captain Nintendo bathed the area in different hues, hoping to change the light pattern around Ganon and make him visible. So yeah, if you missed it, Captain Nintendo can do two things. He can, he can change light, and he can bring video game things to life. This will teach you to give chat options channel points. I've been regretting that for years now. There's nowhere near enough sex scenes in this story. We're just getting started! There's two more pages of this shit! Brace yourselves. Uh, going through the spectrum had little effect as old Captain hit upon ultraviolet rays. He could just make out a huge form plodding towards him. He then increased the intensity of the rays, casting a dim silverish wash over the entire reception area. Arrrr! Ganon roared in pain and promptly became visible, waving his ape-like arms and glaring with crazed fury. Cap wasted no time. Though weakened from the, by the blow from Ganon, Cap focused a concentrated beam of solid silver laser light 
and hit the tiring beast full force right between the eyes. <laughs> Ganon was definitely ticked off. He put his paws to his smoldering eyes, stumbled back and plopped to his own keister with considerable thud. He continued to snarl and complain unintelligibly. Captain Nintendo noticed that Mother Brain was quivering somewhat. He realized that the Mother Brain was directly controlling Ganon. Yes, we are, we are, we are nearing the bottom of the second column here. The story used to use keister, the word keister twice in two columns. Yeah, that's a red card right there. All right, you two, that'll be quite enough. Captain Nintendo looked up to see Morgana O'Fay, Nintendo's top receptionist, descending the stairway which led into the reception area. Oh my god, this might not this might not be based on people from the Nintendo Power Staff. It may have been based on the actual Nintendo staff. Like that's probably their actual receptionist at the time. I'm the one responsible for this area, and it won't stand for any roughhousing in here, scolded Morgana. Take it outside where it belongs. This writer wants to totally bang the receptionist. Where it belongs, that's it, said Captain Nintendo himself. Uh, sorry, Morgana, he said, redirecting his attention. This, th they, it. Oh, Brett, it's you! Shouted Morgana, getting a closer look. She had maintained a world-class crush on Brett for some time now, though she never let him suspect it. I didn't recognize. Say, nice threads. I really like the boots, but I'd put, like, a big S on the chest, or a bat. And over here, I'd try one of those. Morgan, I'd, I'd like to stay and chat, but I'm sort of in the middle of something. You've given me an idea. You really did call that one, Eva. <laughs> you really did call that one. Brett, did you injure that thing permanently? Asked Tara. Still attending Max, who's starting to come around. I think he's only blinded temporarily, Cap answered, which means we've got to work fast. You and Morgana stay here and help Max and Zelda. I'll be back very soon. As he turned to go, he could see that Zelda, frozen in fear, looked like a mannequin. Mannequin. Oblivious to everything. Hang in there, princess, he thought. I'm going to get you the best kind of help from where it belongs. Brett raced back to the R&D department. Emerald, he shouted. I saw, I saw, said Emerald. I intercepted magnetic field relays and watched the whole thing through the security cameras. Emerald is like an AI in a Nintendo cartridge that helpfully plot dumps everything in like the back half of the last one. Come back after a week of falling asleep early and this is the things I get. I'm sorry, two to be. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're powering through it. Ooh, that's very good. Thanks. So you know what I've got in mind, asked Cap? Probabilities indicate. Emerald, spit it out. Yeah, I know. Will it work? Well, if we insert random values for random variables not already in conjunction with constant factors. Emerald! I haven't got the foggiest idea. Thanks a heap, said Brett, and turned to leave. Hey, Brett, said Emerald. Yeah, said Brett. Good luck, man. Kick his tail. Moments later, Brett was upstairs in the game counselor's area. Anybody seen Howard? He asked. I think he's down in production passing out autographs. Someone said, dude, are those long johns you're wearing? Another game counselor shouted. Never mind, countered Brett. Is anyone playing The Legend of Zelda? I am, said Philip Bland, but I'm only on level four. I got a magic sword, too. That wouldn't even be this far if it wasn't for the other counselors. How do you have... How do you have the magic sword by level four? I'm not sure the math on that works. Brett hurried to Philip's desk and stood before the monitor. He stared at the colorful screen and concentrated. Suddenly, there was a bright flash and changed attention to the other game counselors. And there, standing beside Captain Nintendo, big as life, was Link. Well, cool, shouted the counselors. Hey, Phil, what kind of controller are you using? Is that in the player's guide? It is possible I have the magic sword in level four. Can confirm. Confirm. Thank you, Manic. Well, we know this game, the, 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 this bullshit happening on the screen right now is at least accurate. Yes, that's the problem with the story. Boots are killer, but the chest needs a star, the counselors continued. Philip, as usual, was dumbfounded. Come on, said Captain Nintendo to Link. Ganon's here. We need your help. I guess this guy didn't like Philip. I guess they had a beef. Without a word, the heroic pair bolted off toward the reception area where they arrived to find Max, Terra, and Morgana fending off an obstinate dark knight. And to make matters worse, Ganon was beginning to recover. The mother brain just brought here for reinforcements, shouted Terra, noticing the ca uh, Captain and Link arrive. Emerald said she didn't have to spend any more energy controlling Ganon since he was hurt, so she managed to bring this thing here. Emerald? inquired Captain. Kipasa, boss? In a familiar mechanical voice from the reception desk PC. There on the screen was Emerald, and somehow it didn't seem to surprise Brett, considering how quickly Emerald learned what it was capable of accessing. <laughs> I don't understand any of this, said Max, hitting the dark nut square in the jaw with no effect. Hit him from behind, shouted Captain Nintendo. It's his weak spot. 
Max dashed behind the Dark Knight, raised his fist high over his head, and brought them down full force. Oh my god! Did he just do the classic Star Trek double fist smash? This new technique is unstoppable. Without a sound, it vibrated and vanished, though a faint cry emanated from the mother brain. Terran and Morgana sank on the stairs, sighing with relief while Max collapsed completely near the reception desk. I thought that only worked on guys in bad lizard man costumes. I have good news, this only goes up two issues. Apparently this is the conclusion. Yeah, apparently after this we're free. Unbelievable. Um... Rah, 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 Ganon bellowed, his eyes wide and glowing red like volcanic embers. Uh-oh. Dodongo's breath's back, Emerald alerted. Then the brain is pouring all of her remaining energy directly into him. As suddenly as before, Ganon disappeared. Don't be fooled, Link, said Captain Nintendo. He's still here, somewhere. Link wasted no time and struck out in the direction of Ganon's last location. Bingo! On the first swipe, the sword connected hard against Ganon's thick hide. Stunned, he became visible for a few moments as the mother brain quivered and shrieked. Brett fired another silver laser blast, but the giant vanished too quickly. He seems to weaken when he comes into contact with something silver, said Brett. Do you have anything made of silver? Link considered and then shook his head. Silent protagonist, maybe? It was written by Randy Stuttered. It really is a self-insert? Yeah. There's glass in the place. I think you'll find that called a double axe handle. It's usually done from the middle rope. <laughs> Sorry, we're done with WrestleMania. It's over. Get over it. Brett cried Morgana, try my letter opener, it's pure silver. What? Suddenly, Rink, Link fell back against the wall. The raging, invisible Ganon had landed a substantial blow of his own, a blow that knocked the wind out of Link. Captain Nintendo felt it too, since he was directly maintaining Link's life support to this world. Out of nowhere came a pair of flying fireballs straight towards Link, with his legendary lightning-fast reflexes. He struck the fiery spheres. His sword connected with the fireballs, Ganon again became more momentarily visible and then vanished. Two more fireballs hit Link. Captain Nintendo could feel his energy draining, though Link remained standing. It's too close to Mother Brain, said the captain. We've got to separate them, Link. Draw them outside while I get... Bloom! Two more fireballs sped between the captain and Link, just missing them. Link raced towards the door and outside in the parking lot, followed by another pair of fireballs, almost clipping his heels. The door then seemed open by itself, and Ganon's distinctive odor trailed outside. What do you think Ganon smells like? I should inspect it too hard. He's pursuing Link. Captain Nintendo bounded to the reception desk and grabbed the silver letter opener. Oh my god, we're almost done. <clears throat> and then Brett lost the end. Editors note the writer's story no longer works for Nintendo due to mass base errors. How did Captain Nintendo reach the rank of Captain? What kind of army did he join? Did my stream lag? Are you still? I'm still reading this. Yeah. Writing stories about how horny you are for your coworkers in a public magazine always goes well. Careful, it's sh Okay, one more page of this. One more page. Careful, it's sharp, cautioned Morgana. Cap grabbed the letter opener and charged towards the door. As he passed by the stationary mother brain, a drifting bubble seemed to deliberately swoop down against his shoulder, injecting a searing pain. Reflexively, Captain Nintendo churned and fired an electrical blast at the mother brain, but hit her pestle instead with no result. Oh, is it a little, is it a little ring thingos? <coughs> From Metroid? <coughs> Jumping as high as he could, Brett fired another blast, this time directly into the mother brain. Though she seemed to absorb the blast, Cap could tell she'd been affected. Smoke that, witch! He knew he'd made some progress, but there was a more pressing problem in the parking lot. Spaghettios. The Cheerios, yes. Yeah, you should just eat them. Cap shot out the door, during the destru destruction he feared had already taken place. He was relieved to find that Link had thus far managed to dodge fireballs in the unimpeded freedom of the parking lot, and yet, as yet, no real damage occurred. Floom! Link, out of breath, succumbed to two more fireballs, which brought him to his knees. Captain Nintendo 2 had, steady, had to steady himself as he fell to one knee from the loss of energy. They would not survive another such attack, and they both knew it. This won a competition, oh dear fucking lord, what were the losing stories? <laughs> Link said not a word, but nodded his comprehension. A split second later, another pair of fireballs were streaming towards him. The perfect time, and Link raised his sword, divided the flaming globes, and for a third time, the savage Ganon became momentarily visible. This time, Captain Nintendo was ready. Just as Ganon began coming to view, Cap lunged towards him with a letter opener, unerringly connecting with his target. Ganon roared in incredible pain and began to flash in and out of visibility. Cap could hear shrieks coming from inside the building. The mother brain was feeling the pain as well as she was directly supplying Ganon's life support. They keep clarifying that over and over again, as if you don't have the attention span to remember that that's how this shit functions. And to be fair, I bet a lot of you don't. And that's understandable. This is shit. Suddenly, Ganon froze lifeless and then evaporated as though he were being beamed away. The leather opener hung in midair for a second, then dropped to the ground. 
Captain Nintendo looked through the tinted glass and saw the diabolic mother brain shimmer and slowly fade from sight, leaving only a quickly dissipating black smoke behind. Well, said Cap, turning towards Link, who had now, by now risen to his feet. What is there to say but thank you, my friend? He stretched out his hand to the Fable Adventurers. The heroic duo stood shaking hands. Link smiled and spoke the only words Captain Nintendo had heard him declare. I like the boots, but on the chest I'd put, and then Link faded back to continue his adventure in Hyrule on the Game Council's fire. It's like the DBZ School of Fight Writing, <laughs> written by Alexander Dumbass. <laughs> Being employed in a magazine doesn't make you a good author automatically. Oh god, no kidding. Inside, an anxious trio greeted Brett as he re-entered the building. Cat waved them off, however, and approached PC. Emerald, is the mother brain gone, he asked. Well, yes and no, started Emerald. Emerald said a very tired Brett, one day I'm going to fry your ROM. Okay, I'm hip. The mother brain is dormant suspension phase. Uh, what we would call hibernating, so she can store up enough mental energy to resume her plan. There's no way to determine how long she'll be gone. Might be centuries, might be a few seconds. What exactly is your plan, asked Cap. Recall her programming, Brett. The mother brain is programmed to attempt world domination. Had to ask, groaned Captain Nintendo. But with that happy thought, I must be getting back to my desk. I'm way past my break time, said Max, and promptly departed. Did Max do anything in this edition? I don't think so. What a day, sighed Captain Nintendo as he returned the letter opener to Morgana. Brett, what was it you were going to ask me just before all this began? asked Tara. Huh? Oh, well, I just wondered if you'd like to go out with me. There, I said it said Brett, like a heavy burden had been lifted. Well, that's sweet, Brett, said Tara with a strange glit in her eye, but I really try not to date the people I work with, you know? Thanks, anyway. Tara proceeded down the hall as Brett watched her after scratching his head, turning his smile at Morgana and then lumbered outside, where he searched the air with his eyes. He reflected on how his life and purpose had changed so drastically in such a short time, and then he spoke. If you can hear me, Mother Brain, listen well. You will not succeed. For wherever there is a justice to be rectified, a person you need to rescue... Our quest to be taken up. There also, you will find the power of Nintendo. And it will always triumph. I promise. <laughs> In the next issue, Captain Nintendo fights his new nemesis, the sexual harassment lawsuit. What's up, Cold World Steel? I guess you came at the right time. Because this shit is over. It's better than Lost Season 6. Even in his fan fiction, he struck out with the girl he was into. Is it over though? Writers Showcase Contest. Attention all you aspiring writers out there. Got a story you've just been dying to tell, a plot line you've been laying simmer on the back burner, or maybe just a flicker of an idea that you've toyed with from time to time. Oh my god. Contestants should write a video game related short story between 1,000 and 2,000 words, typed in double space, and postmarked no later than March 1st, 1989. Okay, so it's. Not going to be in the next volume, but in the volume after that, or the volume after that, we might need to watch our asses on this. He <laughs> finished all seven inches of Captain Nintendo. First, second, and third place winners will receive scholarship bonds of $500, $250, and $100 respectively. Hmm. I mean, 1989 money, that's like thousands of dollars. All right, that's over. That's done. Oh my God, it's Sesame Street. Okay, well, clearly they still haven't worked out. Um, they haven't uh, worked out their the problems with their circus ass layout here. Just looked up this author on Wikipedia. It turns out they end up writing the final season of Game of Thrones. So shame on you all for saying they're a failure. <laughs> no way. No way. No way. No way. Yeah, this is Sesame Street. You want to see it? You want to see it in action? Somebody put up the coins and we'll play it. Please, no. <laughs> wow. Wow, we've even hurt Vexthorn for once. Well, let's go. Let's do it. I'm not, I'm not even going to preview the game. We're just going to do it. <laughs> Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Did I make this too wide? How did that happen? 
It's just Narc with Sesame Street skins. My night was great with Captain Nintendo, then you ruined it. <laughs> I wonder if this will be another miraculous Zelda 2 clone like Rambo. Alright, uh, so there's two games in here. Ernie's Magic Shapes and Astro Grover. I could go for some Magic Shapes right now. How to play- oh, oh, what? I'm sorry, what? I need, I need I need you to understand something here. The D-pad, no matter what you push, it just goes up and down. This is the wrong shape. Press a direction. This is the wrong color. Press a direction. Color palette looks like Loop Hero. This is the right shape and color. Press a button. Oh my god, we made a rabbit appear behind the hat. Cool. All right, that's how you play. Match the shapes. Wrong. I said wrong, there we go. I did it. It seems designed to confuse- I know, right? So this is- this is the gameplay. He- there's a shape over him, he makes a shape appear, and then you push right or left, and then you push a button, and it's- and then you just- you sit back for like a couple minutes while there's fan and shit. Okay, hang on a sec, because I- I didn't realize how big this was. I need to like- Shrink everything so you can see what's going on. Oh my god, no! What am I doing? There we go. Okay. There we go. If you expected more, I don't know why. Bert wouldn't agree to appear in this. The, par the particle effects are pretty solid, honestly. Imagine paying $60 for this. Yeah. You can't skip this fanfare either. Alright, well that was a bit of a challenge. I had to push the button a couple times. I think this promised numbers in this shape's BS is really bringing down the room. I don't know how long I have to do this. Oh, okay, you just push start and get out of here. Uh, match the color. More shape matching. More color matching. Harder shape mat. Uh, hardest? Let's see what hardest of them all is. Wait, do we start here? Somehow I thought there were other mini games in this. There are two. There's this, there's this, and then there's Astro Grover. Astro Astro Grover might be more number-based. Yeah, there's as near as I can tell, there's two games on this. So it's like double the value. According to the New Testament, you literally have to do this for all eternity. Oh wow, that one's pretty elaborate. Okay, hang on. So like, no! No! Oh my god, you, you actually have to reset to get to the other one. Grover and Ernie copyright 1988. Yeah, it's just these two. Yeah, here you go. Select a game. Ernie's Magic Shapes or Astro Grover? I just bailed puzzle was too hard. How many zips? What? Two. What the fuck? 
This is kind of creepy. This like low hum. Like there, there, there's levels like this in Wizards and Warriors designed to creep you out. That would be four. I don't like to play this one ketamine. What happens if you don't pick the right shape when it shows up? Oh, it just, it like honks at you. And you pick another one. I guess I can find out what happens when we screw this up. This is secretly a horror game. There are four aliens. Oh, the moon is so disappointed in me. Okay, again, I, I need you to understand this. Like, the D-pad does nothing. No matter what direction you push, it's just cycling. There we go, I'm going through chat and we'll ban it. Whoever requested this. <laughs> Count the funny aliens being ejected from their crimes against the mothership and create reality b below you, I guess. I'm not really sure how the aliens relate to the neighborhood. Oh man, it just narked on grunt fodder. Ouch. Pay for your crimes, Scott. <laughs> Panic Grip Hunter and also Manic for being an arc. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> this offends you more than Captain Nintendo? Wow, I identified seven aliens and all I got was a doghouse. The Duck House will suffer 500,000 in Vancouver. <clears throat> Reminds me of how happy I am to be past the, uh, the actual money part of buying a new house. Now it's just moving in. This doesn't have sexually harassing coworkers so far, so I'd say it's better. That's fair. Still better than John Elway. Oh my god, it's Grover. A giant Grover. I think he's dancing? I think this is supposed to be a dance. <laughs> G-Rover. Uh, does this, does this end? Alright. Beam that number, adding countdown, take it away, zip, sum up, sum down. All right, let's see what the hardest one is. I did just make Grover House. How about that? Oh, okay. Okay, so there's actually different mini games inside of this one. Can we have factorization? I'm sorry, what the fuck are you doing? Oh my god. So better than John Elmo's football. <laughs> Short for Gravity Rover. Oh, you gotta keep doing it to get him to launch all the way off. So when you push the button, this happens. They have to rearrange themselves to make room for the next batch. Poor aliens being used as currency. Oh God. Oh God, Grover's an intergalactic slave trader. Grover just ripped off Space Invaders. Uh, I think you need everything for this. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, so we're, we're trying to make the sum in the ship. I 
wasn't expecting to make you use all three numbers. That's a surprise. This is actually a, a, a distant prequel to uh, Space Organ Warlord Trading Simulator, which will be out later this year. I wonder who would understand you just doing three plus three. Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Try one four times. Okay, okay, we'll try, we'll try that on the next one. It's even good to understand. Oh no, I won, I'm sorry. Not really. Girl, we'll cut you if you get loopy again. Let, let, real quick, let, let's let's see if that works. Eight. All right, let's see if we can do four and four. That's the quickest way to test this theory. Okay, it works. <laughs> Unless the game was like, you made eight, but the wrong way, idiot. Is really slave trading they're being used as rocket fuel? <laughs> <laughs> Literal grist for the capitalist mill. Maybe kids play this and see if they think it's lame or not. No, I would not inflict this on my kids. Only on you, chat. Only on you. All right, that's done. All right. Someone actually requested WrestleMania. We're doing it. R res. Res. WrestleMania. Okay, wow, there's a couple of these. Are you inflicting on us or are we inflicting on you? I'm actually wearing a yellow shirt today. How about that? Bigger, better, better. Sometimes the sprite flicker makes Groover's head vanish and scares me. Please select number of players. One. Enter your name. Ah! Select your wrestler. Who do we want, chat? Hulkamania is exposing itself to you, just like the real Hulkster. This is the one with Bam Bam Bigelow. We got, okay, we got, we got the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. We got Bam Bam Bigelow. We got Honky Tonk Man, who I've never heard of. Randy Macho Man Savage. Andre the Giant. Hulk Hogan. I'm not doing Hulk Hogan. But you can pick the other, any of the other five. Macho Man and Andre, Million Dollar, Andre, Randy. I didn't know when he wants to be a millionaire. Andre, Andre it is. Andre, Andre has taken it. Select your opponent. Let's beat the shit out of Hulk Hogan. God, wait, flashing stars warning, Jesus. You're Andre. Oh Lord, oh my God. Motherfucker tried to headbutt me. Oh, oh, punch you. Oh, no, 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 no. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I'm kicked. Oh, fucking. Oh, I'll kick the shit out of you. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm purple. Holy fuck. Can I? No. Does, does Andre run? Oh, he does run. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Hulk, you suck! Let me kill you! I see I nominated Masterpiece. There. Uh. Oh my god. Oh, I should have been paying attention when they told me how to play this game! Purple your limit break, I wish. Okay, I go back to normal color after a while and also regenerate energy. So there's that. You have shit. I want, whoa, okay, so it just leaves. And apparently that's not for me. Why is it for him? He's a piece of shit. Doesn't Andre the Giant deserve good things? <laughs> I'm just gonna dance up here. <laughs> get up. Oh no, get off me. Oh, that's gross, get off me. Oh. That's it. That that's your game. Blah, 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 blah. 
Um. All right. All right. Let's be uh, be the Goblin King. I think he hit by Andre more than once, not just Flat and Hogan. Well, obviously it was Fix. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat up a Honky Tonk Man because I want to see that hair in action. We're gonna be ba -ba 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 bam 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 Bigelow. Ugh. Ugh. Come over here. Get near my head so I can butt you. Ugh. Ugh. How does he? How do they punch like that? Oh my god! Oh my god! I did a cartwheel. That was rad. How's he doing combos and shit? I can't do combos. Pam Pam is round like an egg. No, get up. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Ugh. Stop punching me, you dickhole. <laughs> That's not helpful. T-Rex ass motherfucker. Ooh, there we go. Oh, get him. No, 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 you, you, you gun, you done got, got. Uh-oh. Boom! I'm gonna keep doing this. I, I don't actually have to do anything to make him go back and forth like that. Shit. Oh, go. Go, buddy. Ah, uh, uh, no. Oh, you fucked it. Objectively, this music sounds very like very little like a boy in his blob. Still makes you think of it. It's shockingly hard to get them to run. Oh god. Ah. It's decoded my new unstoppable technique. Ah. Ah. Big piece of shit. Ow! Stop it. Ugh. Ooh, you're turning purple. How you like it? Boom! You know, the thing is, even if I knock him down, I don't know how to... Uh, I don't know how to stop... I don't know how to pin him. Also, I'm about dead. Hey, you said maybe you should be playing as Hulk Hogan so we can see him lose? <laughs> You've heard of Triple H, which so is Hextuple B. All right, well, that happened. All right, uh, how about, why don't we go back to the magazine? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, God. Honky Tonk Portrait is great. All right, so this was Sesame Street 1, 2, one, two 3. Ernie's magic shapes the game where he match shapes and colors with assorted objects. Ernie is playing magician will present a colored object from the magic cat. He'll select the best match. Why? Why did they decide to mash, like, 20 crappy little screenshots in here? You know, this is, this is before, like, video capture shit. They had to take each of these screenshots by hand. Why are you reading this to us? I, I want to make sure you didn't miss anything, Vexthorn. Dear parents and grandparents, introduce the younger members of your family and neighborhood to the NES with these fun learning games. This is exactly the way to introduce somebody. Oh my god, it's Link. Very graphic design is my passion, yeah. <laughs> Very important backstory for the next cap chapter of Captain Nintendo. Yep, next he's somebody. <laughs> He's summoning Ted DiBiase and Grover to help him. And his left-handed cannon. After the fall of Ganon, years have passed since Ganon's defeat, and Link has grown strong since that epic struggle. Much evil still remains in Hyrule. 
Princess Zelda knew the secret of the Triforce, but refused to tell it to a great sorcerer. He then cast a sleeping spell on her. As foretold in Legends of Man of Royal Baron would come to save Zelda and Hyrule, and his hand would show a mark. To overcome evil forces, Link must find the third piece of the Triforce, wisdom and power he has already. Now he must find courage. All of this has gone over in great detail in the instruction manual. There's actually like six or eight pages of story in the in the manual for this. Do not, yeah, don't do Legends all the timelines. It's not worth it. In before none of us can request this, yeah. Yeah, we, we've already, we've, we've beaten this one, so. A reimagining of Zelda 2? I think they should have just, like, they should just make more games in this style. Like, thinking back, there are no other, like, 2D side-scrolling Zeldas, right? There's the top-down Zelda, there's the top-down 2D Zeldas, and then the 3D Zeldas, right? Wouldn't take too much to make Zelda to a ton. Yeah, just some tweaks. Really, it's it's a solid game. And CG, CDI Zeldas don't exist. I know they pretend that Legend of Zelda has a coherent timeline to sell some book, but come on. Yeah, seriously. So this is all pretty cool. Rundown of the items, the magic. Um, mm -mm -mm. Study well the battle map of Hyrule. Do not be deceived. The distances of Hyrule are greater than they first appear. Along is the road, Link will travel and fraud many dangers. So a lot of this is pulled straight from the instruction manual, including this map. Um, this is really not a helpful map at all. Like it's kind of, it, it's kind of too impressionistic to give you an idea of where things actually are in relation to each other. Reality is a lot of NES games would be improved by just the addition of a couple buttons. Also true. Whoa. Servants of Ganon have invaded. Color shows its strength. So they're, they're trying to get across that it goes orange, red, blue, but I don't think they really, they really got it there. King's Test. Passing the palace guardians in the depths of each of the six palaces of Hyrule, a mighty guardian challenges Link. Long ago, the king who broke the Triforce and hid the fragment of courage set these guardians the task of protecting six mystical statues as a key to regain peace and land. Wait, the, the the dragon of Castle Six is named Barbara? It's not very imposing. Thought green would be first? I don't think there are any green enemies. There's There's orange, red, and blue. Such a name as Barbara. <laughs> Iron Knuckles, the foe that attacks you with something other than his fists. I know, right? The swordsman. <laughs> Having four buttons on the NES with a luxury co coming off the Atari. Yeah. Well, I mean, I came from the Commodore. I came straight from the Commodore where your joystick had one... Your joystick had one button. If it had two buttons, they were the same button. I really like the creativity in naming horse head and helmet head. I'll actually take Barbara over those. You're looking on the left, I was looking at the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, down here at the bottom of uh, the left page, they try to they try to explain the color scheme for difficulty. All right, this is helpful. This is actually helpful because this is this is the map. Although they don't show you the cave down here that has your first, I think, magic upgrade in it. But at least they show you everything else. And they do point out the secret wood as if People aren't going to realize that there's something suspicious about the one little square of forest here. At least on the 8-bit computers, you have the keyboard if you need. True, yes. Oh, my God. And I remember I remember the overlays, the paper overlays. Sorry, I'm going to move myself back over here because it makes looking at you all weird. Um, I remember the paper overlays that we had for the Commodore 64 for games like Airborne Ranger Echelon, where, like, every fucking button on the, on the keyboard is used. These things are why Nintendo Power is so legendary. Yes, yes. It took him... So, so I, w I will be back. That's a great handle. Um, I started Nintendo Power about 10 issues in. And by then, you know, that was like a year and a half into their run. Um, by then, they had kind of ironed out all the weirdness with their, with their graphical layouts. They understood what they needed to drill down on um, in, uh, on their features. And it really, that's how I learned about a lot of different games that I, that I wanted to, to get and play. These early issues are honestly really rough in terms of layout and like actually extracting useful information from them. But you can see 
you can see how it's evolving issue by issue. I'll show the enemies from the final dungeon on that enemies page. Um... No. No, it doesn't have the bird knights on here. <laughs> Animated real person emos creep me the heck out. I mean, I guess that means I need to get one. Uh, so yeah, North Castle Desert Cave, Parappa Palace, Parappa the Palace, Ruto Rauru. Link first visits Rauru. Oh my God! They actually mapped out the castle. I mean, this is you know this is the simplest castle, but still. And they hand drew it too. This is not from the manual. All these other, all these other little bits of, of art here, these are all from the manual, but this map isn't. We should play whatever game has his music. Veto! <laughs> Been there, did that, done that, never doing that again. But yeah, this is this is actually pretty solid. How much did it wow, they did this they did uh, the Swamp Palace too. Damn. That's actually really cool. And the Island Palace. Yeah, hand, hand drawn is what really impresses me. And the Fourth Palace. Okay, okay, so they stopped at the, oh fuck, don't do this to me. So they stopped at the Fourth Palace. But still, I mean, I remember the Fourth Palace is pretty confusing. There's a lot of like, there's a whole lot of verticality to this one. Okay. Yeah, I'll just be quiet if I listen to. I don't think I'd recommend Blaster Master Zero if you didn't like the original. It's okay game, doesn't do enough to make it more fun to play. Hmm. I wonder, I don't need a whole lot from Bla I, I don't need a whole lot to improve the Blaster Master experience. I mean, somebody mentioned in Zero that the, the final mobility upgrade you get becomes a toggle. I feel like that alone would make like a huge difference. Area 7 stealth mechanic is hot. Wait, they added a new mechanic? Did you ever play Rad Gravity? No, I didn't. No, I did not. I do recognize the name. I think I copied some of these onto graph paper as a super young kid from the copy of this. Oh, you, you know what? I saw something really cool. Um, it's all packed up now, but um, I had a bunch of loose old stuff from these Nintendo powers in my closet that I need to that I need to to pack. Um, a couple like a bunch of map inserts and extra stuff and whatever. Um, I found a hand drawn map of the I believe it's the final dungeon of Secret of Evermore. And I thought that was really cool. A, ha a hand-drawn map that I had drawn myself, because I, I, I honestly don't remember much about the dungeons in that game. The only things I really remember about Secret of Evermore, I remember the first area, because I played through it a couple times. Um, and I remember the marketplace. And I remember Cecil from Final Fantasy IV is hidden in it, which I always thought was really, really cool. But a, a lot of the rest of it just kind of blends together. So yeah, this is really this is really cool coverage of this. And then in March we'll agent conquering the guards of the fifth and the sixth palaces. Okay, so they're gonna cover this again and they're gonna go through the rest of the game. It seems like Evermore is much maligned. I love that. Game. I love that game too. Um, it's it's not as even an experience as Secret of Mana, but I, I feel like it makes up with it just in sheer creativity. Isn't the final Evermore dungeon fairly linear? I... I mean, from the look of the map, no. I could be wrong. It might have been a map from a different part of the game. It was definitely from Evermore. Still tickling me endlessly. The localization team invented a bunch of small child chasing a frog nonsense for the US release of Blaster Master. And Sunsoft loved it so much they made it canon. Uh, Fifth Palace, Sixth Palace, and then the Depths of the Great Palace. So this map here... Oh, okay! So this is actually a complete map of the world. That's actually fairly accurate. Uh, it even shows a little secret upgrade. Not quite in the right place, but yeah. The Swamp and Saria Town and... The absolute unrelenting shithole that is Death Mountain. 
And then the second area. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, fold-out maps are the good stuff. I still have all of mine from um, from the issues I do have. Most of, most of them I didn't pull out, but a few I did. And my only concern here... Oh, God. Oh, God, what have you done? Okay, so that's the thing. When they did the scans of the magazine, the, the fold-outs... The fold-outs screw up the page sequencing after that, so now everything's on opposite pages. I wish there was something I could do about that, but eh. We're, we work with what we got. Yep, skate or die. We're not playing this again. Don't even try it. Uh, I played this last time. It was... Okay, there's five events, right? Um, Joust was the only fun one. Joust was legit fun. Uh, the the halfpipe ones were kind of... The halfpipe ones were kind of eh, except for the fact that your character literally fucking explodes when they wipe out on the halfpipe. And then race and jam are just super muddy and unfun. Yeah, we skated and died. Emphasis on died. <clears throat> OG Tony Hawk. Main bit that disappointed me about Blaster Master Zero is the on-foot sequences. Keeping the max guns tends to trivialize most of the game. Much easier to do with one-hit regen shields. Have you done Little Nemo the Dream Master? No. No, I have not. Um, I actually have, I actually have a physical one of that. I bought it a long time ago. Wherever you are. I swear to God, whenever I go to the drawer to like find a game to wave around at y'all, it's always one of the ones that gets shoved into the back. They did do they did do a Nintendo Power feature on Little Nemo like further in in one of the issues that I had. So oh, this is Chip and Dale music, nice. We will get to that. Don't worry. Oh wow, they actually map all this shit out. They eat ramp, skatehead, they say to the grease stain that used to be you. We will skate and die again once to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Downhill jam, race. The jam was actually okay. The race sucks. The race felt really, really crappy. The three opponents of the pool joust. Poser, Pete, Agro, Eddie, and they call him Bionic Lester. I don't know why. Uh, all right, Howard and Nestor. Oh boy, hey Nestor, you made it to the track and field two Olympics. It wouldn't start without me. I wonder which gold medal I should win first. Hey, you seen the coach? Can't you see I'm busy? No. Oh, some help he is. You know who the coach is? Who? Hey, where's the coach? I gotta check in. Hi, Nestor. Oh no, not him again. Howard and Nestor art is actually pretty. I actually really like this art style. I really, really like this. And they gave this artist more to do in later issues. Like they started having them do, like th this artist is on, the artist this, that does these like crazy looking people. Um, this artist is is uh, like on a lot of Nintendo Power stuff for quite some time. This this Howard and Nestor artist, they, get, they start getting him to do, or her, whoever it is, um, some game feature stuff too and it looks really, really good. I saw Skater Die felt like EA was trying to rip off the Epic Sports game and EA poached a bunch of stuff, stuff from Epics. <laughs> We've got to hurry, the triple jump is starting. Did you warm up yet? Nah, that's for amateur. He looks like fucking coked out of his mind here, if you can see that. Nestor, look out for that discus! Yikes! You gotta be careful, this is serious competition. They planned that. Let me help you out. Thanks. For nothing. This is easy, just hop, skip, and a jump between me and the thrill of victory. Remember the angle of your jump. Keep the first two jumps between 55 and 65 degrees. The last jump shouldn't be more than 80 degrees. More important, your time is critical. Let me show you how I'm really done. Look out, world. Here's Nestor's gold rush. Faster, Nestor, faster. This must be agony of defeat. Guess it's all for the Olympics. Who knows where we'll meet next time. Get me out of here before they give my medal to some bozo. Uh, I assure you. I, I, would like, I would like to take a moment to assure you all these get funnier. These, these start to have actual jokes. Later in Nintendo Power's run, uh, it's just like everything else, but it's a bit rough going. I laughed, I cried, it was better than Captain Nintendo. I mean, let's be real for a second here. Some nerd reading out a comic strip is never going to be as funny as just reading it yourself, so. I, I am doing nothing for this, honestly. 
All right, uh, Counselor's Corner, Super Mario Bros. 2. How do I get to the other side of the water in World 4-3? You jump on the egg, idiot. Where are the warp zones? World 4, World 5, World 6, and World 7. Oh, Warp 2, those, so. I feel like they already covered these. Sometimes I beat the Fry Guy in World 4-3, there's no door. What do I do? If you destroy the last piece of the fry guy, try to avoid touching it as it falls. If you do touch it, you may not be able to leave the area. When this happens, press the start button, pause the game. And with the other controller, press and hold up on the control button. Oh, what? So they just tell you to reset. You know what this is? If I'm not mistaken, I think if there's one of these mushroom blocks sitting where the door is, it won't open. I think you just have to move the mushroom block, and then it'll show up. I think. I, I should have been game counselor. Some bullshit. <laughs> Whatever, Rod. It's me calling the counselor's corner and asking how to unlock jokes at Howard and Nestor. <laughs> uh, go, go 13. How do I get through the bases? How do I advance past Greece? Uh, just buy a better game, unfortunately. Wait until the used market opens up and then sell it. Entire no power tip line can only do so much. Wizards and Warriors, where did I find the red key in the lava stage? Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. This got me stuck in Wizards and Warriors 1 for so long. The lava stage is such a piece of shit, and I think I talked about that when we streamed it ages ago. Uh, Zelda First Quest, how do I get through level 7? Wow, what a noob. Um, gameplay Hot Shots, answer your questions. Agent 59. Hobbies, computer investment... Anal analysis and playing Nintendo. Has a high score in Rad Racer. Favorite NES game, Metal Gear and Star Wars. Favorite NES game, not games, idiot. Cliff over here, hobbies, sports, arcades, and playing my NES. High score, Solomon's key, 7 million, fuck. Golgo13 kicked so much ass as a kid. I wonder if I would have had the patience for it if I had it when I was a kid. I had the page patience for Ninja Gaiden 2. <laughs> the tip line. Have you tried turning it off and on again? It's hot shots like they had their photos taken the day of the office Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Dave Conley. Hobbies. Water and snow skiing, windsurfing, scuba diving. Between playing uh, Golgo. Oh my god. First person at Nintendo to finish Golgo 13. Favorite NES game, Golgo 13. Fucking wow. Dave seems like a cool dude. Admit it, Trogdor. Is this you? <laughs> and then Brian. Hobbies, games, gaming, all types. Video, board, role-playing, computer, writing, reading, game accomplishment. Beat Metal Gear in one day. Does Metal Gear even have a continue system? Can't rock a stash like that. <laughs> And then, oh god, I'm surprised there aren't more questions in here about Castlevania 2. This game can be fucking confusing. Um, with the crystals do, how do I get past Yuba Lake, the Dever Cliffs, and enter into Berkeley Mansion? Yeah. Brian, looks like you should be... <laughs> it was the 80s, it was a different time. I'm not talking about conduct, I'm talking about fashion. Or the lack thereof. All right, classified information. This is a big old page on Double Dragon. Mission one magic. There's some tricky moves that may or may not help you advance in the game, but they are fun to watch. When you meet the low pars, knock one of them down just in front of the ladder on the left part of the screen. Walk around the right and hide in the corner. If it stands up, it'll be lifted by a mysterious force to the ledge at the top of the ladder. Uh, in the same area, grab a barrel and walk close to the corner until you see your character's feet are slightly above the ground. Throw the barrel instead of just going the usual short distance. The barrel will spiral up and out of the screen, never to be seen again. Near the end of the mission, where the Linda characters are, walk to the right so that you're up against the wall next to the pipe. Press up on the control pad and you'll rise up and out of the screen. Be aware this will probably result in your being stuck. Then you have to reset the game and start at the beginning. They were nerds before Revenge of the Nerds made nerds cool. The dude couldn't grow up a Magnum P.I. stash. Was he even a real dude? Pass Chintai in Mission 2 without even confronting him. Just climb up to the top of the building, watch Chintai appear, and then climb down. Just a few seconds, you'll be in Mission 3 without fighting the last enemy. Um, so you can really fuck with the original Double Dragon. That's kind of cool. 
Mega Man special tra uh, strategy. Monsteropolis will never be the same once you master a secret fighting technique. Monsteropolis? Is Monsteropolis part of the Mega Man canon? Outweighed video game boss. So this is this is the pause trick for the rock monster. Content is best to defeat Cutman first and use Cutman Blade to like the Oh, th so this is just the the order. <clears throat> Blaster Mat, yeah. Um Konami code for life force. Come out fighting with an arsenal containing twice the special items and abilities you had before in Gauntlet. Start a two-player game, use the same password for both characters. Give you two identical fighters. Let the second character die and collect all the loot they leave behind. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not doing Blaster Master again. Sorry. I'm also not doing Bla uh, Bonnet Commander again, though that was a fun night. What the fuck is that tip supposed to be? Key play! On your mission, destroy the evil Plutonium boss and his band of radioactive mutants. Keys can be very hard to come by. At the beginning of stage five, uh, there are two barriers that require keys. We have an hour to find a way to get by the barriers if you only one key. First, destroy the enemy at the end of stage four, grab the key, and move on. We get to the first barrier, use the key to open the lock, and move your vehicle between the barriers, leave the vehicle. This is literally what you are supposed to do. This is exactly what the game communicates to you. And this is extra stupid because they just tell you to fall off the side and die. There are platforms that you jump your way down. This isn't a tip. This is sabotage. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody's head in the way? Well, I'll fucking let them know, chat. Yeah, this is this is an anti-tip for Blaster Master. This is bullshit. Sorry, ah, you're a noble character, but I'm gonna take all your strength, you're selling, give your gold to someone to like, then delete you. Uh, Bionic Commando, alternate weaponry. Usually you defeat your enemies in this game by blasting them. Your weapon does have limitations, however, as it will only shoot horizontally. This would sometimes leave you in a jam if, you're, if it were your only hope. Luckily, you can also use your Bionic Arm as weapon. This comes especially handy in Area 3 when you come across the giant fly directly overhead. If you have the timing right, you'll be able to shoot the Bionic Arm up and score a direct hit. So, I guess they assume people would not try to grapple enemies with Bionic Arm. Um, you may have tried every weapon you have uh, to do away with the commander of the enemy troop in the last overhead combat scene. So I'm not even scratching unless because he's invincible and can't be defeated. You'll just have to find another way around him. Only good thing about that is you can guarantee opening the lock on one life instead of risking it to some bullshit death from jumping one pixel too high. Even that is sketchy. True. True enough, I suppose. Track and field hammer throw. Press the direction arrows on the control pad in a counterclockwise pattern. Um, make sure the power meter is very low. Press and hold the A button when the character flashes and let go when the angle is 80 degrees. Oh, okay, this is actual cheat. Hammer will only go a short distance. Your effort will be rewarded. 92.04 meters is a new world record. Wrap your fingers and take the control pad in this game. Quick button pushing and manual dexterity really come into play. One way to optimize your speed is putting your thumb and forefinger. Oh, this is just techniques for button mashing. You can choose the stroke for the computer-operated swimmer when you're playing a one-player game. The computer usually swims freestyle. If you press down on control pad 2 before you're off the blocks, the other swimmer will swim the butterfly stroke. Ooh. Oh god, no. Bring my screen back. Come here, self. Alright. Sorry. Y'all excuse me for one second. I'll be right back. the anti-doping council know about these tips marble madness it's a wild race against the clock for one or two players you can control the mad marble as it winds its way through tough terrain and pass a variety of obstacles and enemies to the final goal stage one and two are a piece of cake relax it's fine fuck okay i knew it was coming but still um 
Control pad steals are marble. A button when held down gives it extra speed. Stage one will help you get uh, used to the movement of the marble when you play the game for the first time. Master the stage quickly is more advanced player. You'll be able to earn bonus points. Stage two is where the real race begins. Meet your enemies. Black ball. Dodge quickly. Avoid this character. Uh, marble eater. A collision with this character will stun you. If you stay in one place too long, a marble eater could swallow you whole. Slimes. Don't let your marble even touch one of these powerful puddles. The slightest contact with the six slime will dissolve your marble into nothing. Birds. Birds fucking suck ass so hard. Oh, so they start you. They start looking at this from stage. Oh, they go through everything. Stage three, four, and five. All right. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. Birds are jerks in almost every video game. That is true enough. Mubble Madness. I've actually played this in our in the arcade. Talk about frustrating. Mubble. Mubble. Uh, ma mar Mario. Milton Bradley presents one player. Ah! That control type. I think we're on ninety. Think. There's no version of Mubble Madness that isn't frustrating. I'm not even aware of other versions of Marble Madness. Like, are there other? Was there a sequel to Marble Madness? I think there's a. I think there's a Game Boy port of it, maybe. Yay! I did it. Hooray. This is where the real race begins. <laughs> the real Marble Madness starts here. Marble Madness grips the nation, killing thousands. Ow. Dizzy ball. Don't you fucking eat me, you piece of shit. No! Oh god. Oh Jesus. Oh fuck. Go down. Oh shit, the ice. I forgot about the ice. This part is designed specifically to make you hate everything. There we go. Oh, this is just Sonic 3D Blast. Their games are more frustrating than Monkey Ball games. I've only ever heard good things about Monkey Ball. Very, yes, very memorable music. That is true. You're terrible at this when you were a kid. So was I. So was everybody. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well. Didn't actually lose that much time for that. They're really good, but really hard. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Had this on Commodore 64 playing this with a joystick as criminal. <laughs> Only rotary encoder for the real experience. The game that just never transitioned well from the arcade experience where it used a trackball. The trackball controls were neat. Yeah. Definitely, definitely the way to play it. Oh, I forgot those I forgot those vacuums could kill you. Oh fuck. Ow. Oh, pipes. Fuck you, pipes. There we go. I, I may have, I may have kind of fucked this. Oh yeah, God, you're supposed to jump this. That's not happening. All right, well, I think we lose. Unless I can make it over here. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember that. Don't go this way. Oh, wait, wait! I had that. Ah, oh, it's too far. Fuck. <laughs> Out of time, game over. You lose, nerd.
Upcoming Switch one could be a fun stream. Oh, the, the Monkey Ball compilation. When you die, the last thing you see, out of time. If we're gonna do a marble game, wouldn't marbles on stream be more fun? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Also, I have an outstanding request for Incredible Marble, I think. The one where you make those, uh, those like, marble run things from your childhood. We are going to do that sometime. I haven't forgotten. It's early access. I'm waiting for them to add more stuff to it. Dark Souls Challenge Nerds need someone to play their NDSs anyway. Eey. Maybe I should try going to that tube sometime. Oh, shit. I got greedy. I've actually watched Arca speed uh, speedrun this one, which is pretty interesting. You don't think Marbles on stream is suffering? You have to see the portal levels. All right, time is cumulative in this. So the better I do on previous levels, the more time I'm gonna have for the later ones. I forgot about that little factoid. Oh shit. The acid sucks so bad. <laughs> the acid sucks so bad. Okay, I have to remember to go the other way this this time. Dash and pay to win if you actually care about it. <laughs> Alright, I can do this. Whoosh. Ah! Ball! Ah! Ball! Oh, okay. Okay, I remember where I want to go this time. Not on the pipes. Pipes bad. Oh my god, this is really hard to parse visually. Okay. 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 Uh, no, under. Okay. Under. Oh, over. Does anybody know why that happens? Why you sometimes just randomly get time? Oh god, smashy hammers. Fuck you. Oh god. Shit. Fuck. Oh god. Okay. 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 Ha! Did it! Never made this music a fucking asshole. <laughs> Alright. The silly race. This one. Everything you know is wrong. This one you fall upwards. And there's a bunch of tiny bullshit here. And then you go up the thing. And you have to... Do the thing in reverse. And it sucks, and everybody hates it. Oh god. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. And I got more time, yay. Oh god. I do want to remind you, chat, that this is the silly race. This is the fun one. Oh god. I have to fucking. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. 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 Oh no! Come on. Come on. Hey! And the ultimate race! Oh, get the fuck up there, man. Uh, go! Alright. Down the tube. Cross there. Oh, acid, fuck you. No, eat shit. Okay, okay. Oh no, I'm going too slow. Oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh, right, 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 right. Moving platforms. Ah, shit, okay. Shit, 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 
Shit. I should have gone. Fuck. Uh. No! No, I had it! I had it! Someone told this composer to make stress the music. Marble versus Yoku blocks. Ah, you were on a roll. I guess I could try that one more time. It isn't marble sanity. Yeah, game hard. Game hard. <laughs> Too fast. You can actually get going so fast in this game that the, the, the screen scroll can't keep up with you. Oh, case in point. Game Hard reports local streamer. More news at 11. This song, at least, is extremely memorable, because, well, most people were stuck on- Oh, no! Fuck. Most people were stuck- <laughs> I love how horribly this, this part is designed. So that you will end up going off the edge. I really wish I'd done better there. I'd have a bit more time to work with. Oh, that was terrible. Really, like, the last thing you want is your ball to, like, break on a surface, because then it's going to do this stupid sweeping up animation. Shit. There we go. Ah! Well, the composer really did hate people, huh? The very concept of listening to things. Remember this game having a really big advertising campaign behind it? Really? I just remember seeing it in arcades. Shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. Fuckers. 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 No. <laughs> I think, I think I'm already screwed on this one. Ah! Oh my god, let me go! Yeah, I, there's no way, I, no way I'm gonna have enough time. I was hey, there, okay, cabinet controls, so you can do a scene in many places while you're are also caring to play it. Because they give you less time for each subsequent level. So without saving up time from the previous levels, it's just not possible. And it's not, the, the way the game is designed, you can't really make up time. <laughs> well. Well, you saw me get within one second of beating the game, so. There is that. What's the lore behind this game? Uh, sentient marbles fucking hate humanity as a whole. It's a life lesson. You can never make up time. Yep, there's, there's a moral here. <clears throat> Marble.
Marvel's lead, need love too. Did they even? Yeah, they, they don't even bother mapping out the final race. They're just like, good luck, nerd. Get fucked. You don't have to jump that part you thought you need to. You just have to go full speed. Oh, okay. Okay. It's like, you really have... That's one aspect of the game you really have to learn because the perspective doesn't always make things clear like that. Post-apocalyptic. Marble Man Randy Savage. Oh, Operation Wolf. So I guess here they actually break down the strategy. This is a lot of ink spilled over Operation Wolf. I'm pretty sure you could beat the game in less time than it would take to read through all this shit. In time, difficulty was replacement for content and sometimes quality. Yeah. Yes, the perspective is definitely shit. But yeah, we, uh, we blasted through this last time. Oh my god, look at the fucking president here. Holy shit. I died in the middle of the airplane mission last time, so... Which was which was enough for me. Oh god, more NES. I swear to god, they've had like an intent like a like a NES football feature in every issue we've looked at so far. And I don't know why. But we already looked at all of these. Tecmo Bowl, John Elway's quarterback, NFL football. Which one is Let me see here. I to play more football. God, I hope not. So let's see. John Elway's quarterback. Okay, this game sucked. This game looked aw awful. Yeah, this is January. You need to track more people to the video game after the big crash for years ago. How do we do that? In a big soccer game. Say, des desperately trying to convince people video games aren't just for nerds. Big time for football? Uh, that's a good point. That is a good point. Tecmo Bowl. We played Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl was all right. How to call plays. And then, oh my god. NFL football, I don't think we played. I think I think we skipped over this one. Probably feature football games and hope the average person sees them as willing to give the NES a shot. Well, yeah, I mean, in the early days, they had no idea how to market the NES. Um... I, I, I remember, I know I've told you this before, but I, I remember seeing a commercial on TV at the time where um, it was it was like a bunch of like 20, 30 somethings yuppies, like having like a fancy dinner party in their like Manhattan apartment with like hors d'oeuvres and champagne and shit. And then one of them being like, I've got an idea. And then busting out the NES for some fucking contra or whatever. Sports video game is pretty much what propelled the Genesis Mega Drive to success. I don't know much about their story. I don't know much about the Sega side, honestly. Even while they were monopolizing the industry and using horrible strategies in Sega. They marketed to hunters with one of their first titles. That's that's a fair point. That's true. So this is pretty funny. Let's compare some of the special features of this game. Halftime. Tecmo Bowl. Halftime and Tecmo Bowl is fantastic. They're cheerleaders, a halftime show, cheering band members, and exciting crowd scenes. This is what going to a football game is really like. John Elway's quarterback. There isn't any fanfare or scoreboard excitement, but it gives you a chance to catch your breath. NFL football, they didn't even put a screenshot. The halftime in NFL football can try your patience. The music is great, but it lasts a little too long. Queen Elizabeth II liked to play Wii Bowling. <clears throat> Did mention why the Master System failed? I, mm, I don't remember that. Hey, look, it's Terminator. It's Michael Bean. Touchdown. NFL football. The fans are up in cheers. General is quarterback. The players jump for joining the end zone after touchdown. Techno Bowl. Players scored the touchdown. The quarterback celebrate with a high five. <laughs> Sega was second on the scene. Nintendo was starting to establish it. Nintendo went to stores and said, hey, if you carry Sega games, we won't send you any of our products. Ouch. Jesus. I believe this is the actual Metal Gear from the original Metal Gear. That was Lieutenant Bliskin. The last message received from Agent Gray Fox mysteriously said Metal Gear and nothing more. After 24 hours without further contact, it only be assumed that Outer Heaven Group had captured him. No one really knows what Metal Gear is, but it's for certain that if Colonel Vernon Katafi, the insane but brilliant strategist of Outer Heaven, has conceived it, this project has to be stopped. 
Foxhounder needs another top-notch commander to infiltrate Outer Heaven, locate and rescue Agent Gray Fox, and destroy Project Metal Gear. Only one man fits that bill, and that man is Agent Solid Snake. Join the Foxhounder group's newest operative in his impossible mission, the destruction of an unknown weapon and base created by Madam... Isn't this quaint? <laughs> after, after decades of Metal Gear Solid just spiraling wildly out of control, isn't this cute? It fits in so well with the other, like, like NES word salad, like, hand-wavy story stuff. Yeah, I can actually understand the story. Isn't that amazing? Outer Heaven Top Secret Maps. Metal Gear offers amazing action-oriented detail and adventure gaming. Soldiers actually patrol rooms and have the ability to... They're putting fucking squick scare quotes around everything. Soldiers actually patrol rooms and have the ability to see in the direction they face. Use this to your advantage and sneak up behind the guards. I almost feel like maybe the person who played this game for Nintendo Power ended up really fucking hating it. And they were like, yeah, none of this shit fucking works. No mention of nanomachines, son. Nary, nary a peep. General Steve McDykel. <laughs> so I've never been able to get into OG Metal Gear. Um, it's a bit too clunky and a bit too confusing for me. No, no machines. I mean, we tried it last time. We did, somebody put in the coins for it and we gave it a try and yeah, I don't know. Apparently there's a fire trooper and a supercomputer. Metal Gear going hard in the 1980s geopolitics, yeah. Outer Heaven's leader is waiting, but who is he? Oh shit, we made the video shorts. Looks like Mario's having a wee bit of trouble with the projector. So while he's rethreading the film, let us take this opportunity to say we think video shorts are going to take your breath away. The variety of sources of inspiration for these video games are truly amazing. The sources range from the latest feature films, board games, centuries old. Goodwill Games classic literature. There are also some fresh new uh, ones generated for some great imaginations. Okay, Mario, hit it. Friday the 13th. We finally got the job you waited all school year for. Your counselor camp, Crystal Lake Camp. Of course, every job has a few little irritations that make life unpleasant. You know, mosquitoes, poison ivy, whiny kids, Jason. Yes, Jason, star of Slash and Screen, is back at Crystal Lake Camp. He's sharpened his axe. Up to you and your fellow counselors to defend the little campers left in your charge from everyone's favorite maniac. We'll take teamwork. As each of the camp's six counselors has their special talents. As you walk the campground defeating Jason's minions... The what? You'll find items that will be helpful in counseling Jason. If you should become tired and need the special skill of one of the other counselors, go to their cabin and use the special feature. Switch places with them. Pass along weapons you found or cure them uh, if they've been injured by Jason or a zombie crew. But keep a close eye on the cabins. Jason is always on the prowl. If he slashes up another counselor or the camper, it's going to be tough to explain on Parents' Day. None NES original Metal Gear is on GOG if anyone's interested in it. This game is bad. I have a whole spot, uh, soft spot for the old Friday the t 13th TV show. I've never seen the TV show. <clears throat> Alright, well. Eva called it. We're doing it. Friday the 13th it shall be. Hang on. Friday the 13th. Boom. I'm not paying for it. I'm already banned for Sesame Street. Oh, right in the eye. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Uh, let's see. We got George. We got Mark. We got Paul. We got Laura. Debbie and Chrissy. All right. How do we make them fuck, chat? If we're going to beat Jason, we have to lure him out with some premarital teen sex. How do we do this? I can't believe Jason's fucking dead. <laughs> Maniac Mansion the same. TV show is weird in that it had jack shit to do with the movies. I never looked into how it ended up with the IP. The whole Friday the 13th IP was an absolute fucking mess. As evidenced by what happened with the legitimately pretty cool Friday the 13th multiplayer game in the last couple years. Let's be Chrissy. Use a torch to light the fireplaces. Okay. Uh, what the fuck? What the f what? Why? 
No, zombies, fuck off. What is this? Oh my god, is this like a dungeon crawler? What the fuck? This is so weird. What happened to multiplayer game again? I saw some streams and it seemed cool. Um, so there is, there has been a, I can't explain the whole thing, but there's been a long-standing dispute over the rights of Friday the 13th, and basically, uh, after they launched the game, the company that gave them the rights to launch it lost them to, like, one of the dudes that worked on the movies at one point, who said that they couldn't, they couldn't work on the game anymore. First person adventure game with a side scrolling shoot him up, huh? Find weapons, get strapped, kick Jason's ass. This is the cabin I was just in. It sure looks like it. Favorite part of the Friday the 13th movies when the camp counselors fought zombies out in the middle of the day. <laughs> Cabins mostly look the same. Can I just, can I just, can we just, oh, this one looks big. Oh, this one's different. Okay. What's going on in here? I'm supposed to light some fireplaces or some shit. I play Goonies too. No, I played the original Goonies in the arcade a lot, but I never did play Goonies too. Oh god, I got chewed on by a zombie. That's not cool. Okay, why am I am, am is somebody calling me? Oh hey, oh hi Mark. Mark has a rock. It looks like. Writer and the producer of the original films both claim rights to the license. They got in a massive legal, legal battle, which forced the studio to basically freeze any IP development. Yeah. Which is a real shame, because, like, the developers that had the Friday the 13th game, like, they loved... Okay, somebody just died. They loved it. They, like, you could see there was so much love for the series from them, and they, they really put their hearts into that game. And the whole rights thing just completely fucked it. They were disappointed, the fans were disappointed, like, yeah, it was a real- Oh! Does that have a day-night cycle? Uh, I feel like being in a boat with Jason on the prowl is probably not the smartest thing to do- Oh, fuck! Hi, kids! Uh, just- Find something to hide under or something, I guess? Check your map. Check your map. Check check your map. Okay. Alright, I made those. Cabin. Yeah, sorry, Vexstar. We were talking about the Friday the thirteenth, um. Oh, so it's okay. I think when a kid is starting to show up there, so it's probably that blinking greenhouse that's like a million miles away, huh? Game can't be accused of hand holding. Motherfuckers, I want games to hold my hand. Oh shit, this is Mark again. We've already we've already been here. Okay, so, oh, oh, that was a path through the woods. Okay, hang on. I mean, there's, oh, this looks promising. Whoa, that's a knife, give it. Fucking eat knife, zombie, oh God. I don't remember fucking devil dogs in, the, in Friday the 13th. I'm just happy there's a timer. Hit magic missile, magic- Fuck you, dog. I have no idea where I am or what I'm doing. Uh, I think- I think someone else died.
I'm not sure how I'm supposed to understand the geography of this. I don't think I don't think we're getting out of this forest, honestly. I think we're in the forest forever. The fuck? Um, hang on. I want to I want to You can't get in without a key. Oh, eat my ass. <laughs> I have all this medicine and I have no idea how to use it. Map system is kind of all. I've just been in the woods forever. I don't. I have. I have literally no idea how to get out of the woods. I think Chrissy's going to die here. Without without even the honor of being murdered by Jason. This is. This is Oh my god, I escaped. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All we gotta do, ow. All we gotta do is make it over here. There we go, okay, okay, we got this. Chrissy's definitely not gonna die on the, on the water. Definitely not. Oh, eat my entire ass. You gotta be kidding me. I guess the potion brings you back. Thank you! Okay, so Jason, Jason has a life bar now. Oh fuck! <laughs> All right, well, that went about as well as it does in the movies. I'm sorry. All right, well, I got bad news for you. All of those kids are gonna die. The game gives you a lot of playtime per quarter. Those scenes are punch out, so you can actually like dodge them and shit? Oh no, I'm not going this way. Girl can throw these rocks like a champ. Ah, give me that. I now understand the importance of potions. Dodging is really important when Jason starts using uh, starts using weapons. Cool. Okay. I lit a fireplace. I'm guessing I'm I'm guessing there's some kind of like arcane combination of things you have to do to beat this. Like light all the fireplaces and find some shit. The Zelda dungeon music. It sounds like something from Shadowgate. It sounds to me like Shadowgate music. Switch the other counselors in the large cabins. Okay. Well, that's fine. I think we're gonna run out of children in a second here. He's going through them in a hurry. I am the you fuck you if you think I'm going through the woods again. This must be the item world. The game was made by Atlas.
They've uh, come a long way, I guess. Knife! Knife! All you have to do is kill Jason three times until how you do so is up to you. What's up, Hieronymus? Good to see you, buddy. Persona the 13th. Oh my god, I got a key. For a door that I'm never going to find again, ever. You're actually throwing candy at trick-or-treaters to make them go away. Oh. Oh. Hey, I found another one. Okay, everyone, those loved ones are safe and well. You too. You too, bud. Yeah. I wanna... Okay, I'm wondering... I kind of hate this map. Another streamer I follow, we can sometimes request NES games as a person who likes to request this game to punish the streamer. Yeah, this one's a little, um... This one's a little something. Oh my god, is- Oh my god, there's actual platforming to do now. Oh shit. Just turned 35, I feel old, like, only like three to four more years till it's a st statistical middle age. Where I am! Thanks for the reminder, bud. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Woof. Bark. Arf. Laughs in 45. It's got a clear goal, but very obtuse in how you get it. I mean, just navigating these maps, like, I'm having a huge... I'm, I'm having the worst time just figuring out where the fuck I'm supposed to go in these areas. Got another key somehow. Like, uh, the problem is all of these maps look the same. Like, I want to believe I'm going different directions, but it doesn't feel like it. Okay, well, this is actually new. This is this is actually something different. Can we please not talk about the icy grass of mortality? Yeah, let's focus on this game where a bunch of teenagers get murdered. <laughs> and my striking inability to save them. Wasn't there an NES game that used the same song as this? Probably. Well, that's nice, I guess. And we're back outside, amazing. All right, well, that does literally no good. And Jason's gonna murder somebody on the far- Well, you know what? You know what? Fuck it. Let's go see if we can catch his ass. We got 48 seconds. Now we can book it pretty fast. Just chill- three children left and then you can rest. Actually, it took me 10 seconds to get this far, so yeah, I don't see this happening. I was suggest doing what I did play- uh, playing this as a child game genie. Fortunately, on nights like tonight, I have less than no obligation to actually, like, complete these games or do well at them, so... Oh, actually, that went pretty fast. So, as soon as we get a game over, we are out. I did what I wanted to do tonight. I got within one second of beating Marvel Madness. Hey, I did it! Thank you! Can, can we change? Because Debbie's going to fucking die here. Oh, that didn't help at all. Are you fucking kidding me? Wow, okay. 
I feel like Archers isn't treating this with the solemn, solemn solemnity it deserves. I mean, all you have is LG and games, Game Genie's a lifesaver. I guess we'll be George. George looks pretty stoked to be here. Um, alright, so they're still gonna die. Jason Tyson. Ah, I need that knife! I need it. Okay, I'm definitely not going through the woods. To be fair, Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason actually does some boxing. It's where he boxes that one dude's head clean off. I don't know why I'm grabbing this key, it's pointless. Jay Bison. Is this? Ah, this is where I want to go. Okay. All right, back. Thank you. Where's Jason? He was right here. There he is. There's a piece of shit. Ow. Oh my God, my everything. Ow. Oh, okay. Oh, and now in my final moment, I realize how you can dodge. All right, Jason, end this. Music's kind of anxiety producing the game's credit. Oh, is he not even in here anymore? Oh, he fucked off. He's like, well, you're dead enough. I think he only punches with his, with his left. Uh, well, I have a key. We could try getting lost in the woods again, finding that locked door. Probably about the only productive thing I can do at this point. We, we are technically the final girl. But I'm guessing she doesn't get any special powers or anything for her trouble. Oh my god, I got a fucking... What, was that a machete? That's pretty badass. Fuck you, dog. Also, randomly find him in the 2D sections where he's even harder to avoid. I mean, I guess it is kind of cool that they actually make you deal with, like the horror of running into Jason at like the worst times like if you're if you're young and this is all you know then like oh for fuck's sake no the one time that I didn't actually want to make it through the woods I make it through the woods fucking dogs are literally gonna be the death of me not Jason Fucking doggos. One of the best weapons in the game. Does seem pretty solid. So do you have to... So I noticed when I was attacking Jason, I did no damage to him. Um, are there steps you have to take to make Jason more vulnerable or something? Oh, children's. It's a game about weapon progression. You know, I didn't actually mean to go that way. It's just I happened to crouch at the wrong time. Or they almost finished a different game and then someone gave them money to write uh, Friday the 13th? I don't know. You were just the rock and knife deal, basically nothing. Uh, okay. Honestly, like, I honestly don't know. Because this honestly does seem like a pretty interesting game to try to try and simulate the whole like hunted by Jason thing. Like it, it does feel like they specifically tried to make something here, and it just it's just a, a, a confusing, overly difficult mess. Ah, okay, cool. Okay, I found something. What'd I find? I found fucking nothing! Dark Souls of NES Friday the 13th titles use whatever weapon you like, but some will be easier than others. I came all this way to get into a locked room and there's fucking nothing here.
Can I pass on this game? This game suffers from the same thing most NES games do. It all looks the same. Yeah. That's, it's definitely not doing itself any favors. Jason wiped out the kids. Game over. <laughs> yeah, it gets a knife in the eye on the splash screen, so. Oh, you need to light the fireplace for that specific door. Okay. Good to know. Well, that's that. That, as they say, is that. Jason killed everybody, as it should be. You got a crappy message. All right, what else we got? Oh boy. We're not, we're not doing Jekyll and Hyde again. Don't even try it. Don't even think about it. Not a chance. The better message happens when all the counselors die. Jason definitely had a rougher time in the splash screen. They did fighting Oddish. Uh, real talk, you actually like bump, bump and jump. I don't think I've ever played it. I haven't played, I might have played Star Soldier. I'm not sure. World Games. Here's a game that travels the four corners of the earth to bring you international excitement and the thrill of foreign competitions. Your first stop is the Soviet Union. And test your great strength in the snatch or the clean and jerk. Next is on to Germany. Ooh, ooh. I don't know if I want to keep reading. <laughs> you and your friends are dead, game over. <clears throat> for some barrel jumping on the ice in the scenic Mexico for a little tense cliff diving. In France, you'll negotiate the slalom course. And I quit stop in Scotland for a bit of caver tossing. On the far east, bow to your 400 pound honored Japanese punt, then try to throw him to the ground. Travel great white north of Canada for a good day of logging? Log rolling? Finally back to the US of A, summon your courage and ride the terrifying Brahma Bull if you dare. What the fuck was Milton Bradley on? This is Dr. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde game. I wonder what that's like. You should have been here last time, asshole. It was fucking awful. <laughs> Dumpster fire where the fire is somehow also on fire. Star Soldier, Hudson Soft, out in the dark, dim, empty void of space. Star Brain is inhabited in Empire's space station. Starbrain is a giant runaway computer that destroys everything in its path and threatens the existence of the Galactic Empire. I just hate it when that happens. As a renowned star soldier, you're the pilot of Caesar, fastest fighter ship in the fleet, and your mission okay, it's a shooter. Bump and jump, you're asked for a nice driver, the girlfriend, your versatile little car you nicknamed Popper. Suddenly the Jackals, the notorious game thugs noted for their misuse of off-road vehicles, manage to captain your sweetheart. Chase down the gang, rescue your girlfriend, and have to travel 16 courses to and save her. A gang will try to stop you by bumping you into walls or dropping you as your pop path, but you're driving popper. You can do a little bumping and crash in its own. All right. Bump and jump sounds awful even for an NES game. Well, too bad. We're going to try it. We're going to try bump and jump. We're going to try Star Soldier. A lot of people learn to stop naming their supercomputers anything brain. It never turns out well. Yeah, seriously. All right. Star. Star. Soldier. Oh, my God. Hi. Hello. Oh, Jesus. We're going. Wait. I think I played this before. I think I've seen this before. I remember this dopey little ship. Oh God, oh God, oh God, why does it move like this? That's gross. Okay, I got, I got speed. Oh, oh, I got, I got more shooty bits. Oh my God, look at me. Everybody eat shit. Uh, what the fuck is that? Why the fuck can I never see my ship? Why do I pass behind, like, half of the stuff in this game? 
I don't get it. Alright, it's fucked. Sometimes you just stop shooting, I don't know why. It's like the game just doesn't feel like taking inputs any longer. It's a space face, Oddish. Oh god, th th those are space eyeballs. Attack Starbrain. Fuck you, Starbrain. You big gradius looking piece of shit. Brain escaped. Go back to start. Used to think Phil Collins now full Peter Gabriel. Yeah, Peter Peter Gabriel by a mile. I just love Peter Gabriel for the creativity of his uh, music videos. I love those things. They're so good. It actually is Go Back to Start. It actually is, isn't it? So hang on a second. Hang, hang on a second. I have questions. So is this game... Is it just one stage over and over until you finally defeat Starbrain? Oh no, oh no, he hit me and I lost power. And then I died and that sucks. It says stage one, so presumably there's more than one time. I can't do this, I'm sorry, I can't do this, this sucks. There's so many better shmups. Literally anywhere you look, that is just garbage. Bump and jump, please. Oh my god. Okay. Help me! Oh fuck. What? What's, what's going on? Oh, the fur- oh, okay, the further I move up on the screen, the faster I go. Okay. Holy- I'm sorry, what? You want me to what now? Is F-Zero going to be a feature in Nintendo Power? Eventually, yes. Eventually, yes. Oh, man, like, I'm- I'm very much enjoying these NES nights, don't get me wrong. I cannot fucking wait. Oh, fuck, okay. I cannot wait until we get to Super Nintendo stuff. Super Nintendo stuff is gonna be so much fun. Mario stomp their asses, really? Can, can I, is that a thing? Oh my God, it is. Bump and crush. Should call this game Rip and Tear. Ugh! Fuck, nerd. Yeah! Oh no! I didn't jump fast. Can't wait to see F Zero. No, it should be. I know. There's, there's, there's stuff that I'm, I'm really excited to see on the NES that we're not gonna get to for ages because of the pace that we go through these at. I mean, if, if anything, we are we are going through volume four at an absolutely breakneck pace. I was out of pee. Great, you crashed 11 cars. Great. Such as, um, I re there's some stuff that I've seen in Nintendo Power and never actually got the chance to play. Um, there's a platformer I've always been curious about called Eight Eyes, or Eight by Eight Eyes, or whatever, where you're going around to different castles and collecting gems. Uh, there's some kind of Zelda-ish adventure called Mer Magic of Sherzad that I've wanted to try. Um, there's a game that, like, it looked like La Mulana before La Mulana. Oh, wow. Eat my ass. 
Stupid garbage truck. Um, it looks like La Milana before La, La Milana called uh, the search for Dr. Livingston, I think. Game needs some techno or house music. Metal Storm. Yeah, I've never played Metal Storm. Metal Storm, Metal Storm would be pretty cool. Uh, what else? I want to show you all Power Blade. I think, I think a lot of you may not be familiar with Power Blade. And it is a lot of fun. And there's also a sequel to Power Blade that I never played. Um, there, fuck these garbage trucks. Jesus Christ. Grab fuel, smash suckers, beat levels, fun little diversion. We have played Iron Tank before. Um, we played Iron Tank before I started the... We did play a lot of NES stuff before I started the, uh, the Nintendo Power Knights. I started doing NES games when I got my AVS uh, to play games on, and I started buying old games off of eBay. Then once I got the EverDrive, that really kind of opened things up for us to do the NES Knights, because then I could play anything. Yeah, I played a fair number of games from my own collection before I even got the AVS. And then I started collecting uh, used games. Hey, that's how I do without dying. Supposed to be a techno house because there's a, a Genesis game called Combat Cars, kind of like this, or the early 90s British techno. Wow. All right. It looks like I can't, I can't push the garbage trucks around at all. <laughs> I like how all the other cars just kind of like stop peacefully at the wall, where I'm, whereas I'm pretty sure if I didn't stop, I'd just like smash right into it. Or rather, if I didn't jump. Oh, I got bumped. This car talk is making me miss a car MMO I played Auto Assault. I don't think I ever heard about. I don't think I ever heard of. Auto Assault. The only one I ever knew about... There, wait, there was... A friend of mine played APB. I remember that. Um... Wasn't there... Wasn't there, like, Need for Speed Online or something? Like, an attempted Need for Speed MMO? Or am I thinking of something else? Truck... Garbage truck, why are you right in the middle of this shit? Fuck all of you. There's a lot of bumping and jumping in this game. Like, they, they were definitely accurate. Oh my god, Giant Woman says you did a good job. Auto Assault was a racing MMO, you were a car, but you fought. Oh, uh, okay. Great, you crashed 10 cars. I love that. I have Metal, I have Twisted Metal Black. That's the only Twisted Metal game that I've played much of. And yeah, it is, yeah, it, it's a bit, it kind of loses the goofy edge of the early, okay, I kind of lied. My friend, my friend had earlier Twisted Metal games. Um, and I played, I think, two and three, which were goofy. All right, we'll, we'll go one more time, because Manic was enjoying that jam there. Just a metal battle royal deck building robot platformer. You joke, but somebody's probably working on that right now. Whether or not it ever sees the light of day is another matter entirely. Hmm. Bump. Bump. Thanks, Victor. Oh no, I was looking at chat. I became distracted. Game is simple, straightforward, hard to really master as is with mo most truly good games. This is legit fun. This is surprisingly fun. There's definitely, there's definitely strategy to it. Strategy to the bumping and the jumping. I think you get a lot of mileage out of just trying to like massacre everybody on your way to the goal.
It can be it can be fairly challenging just to keep yourself alive. Was it raising Star Wars Galaxies had a whole space dogfighting component, which was real fun. I kind of hate... I kind of hate that I missed out on Star Wars Galaxies, but at the same time, I had friends that played Star Wars Galaxies, and they seemed miserable <laughs> whenever they were talking about it, so... I might, I might have ultimately come out better for having missed it. Knights of the Old Republic. That would be... Wow. I... I've only played... I've only played Knights of the Old Republic once. Back around when it came out. So that would be... That one guy is just fucking waiting for me. And then he died. Whoa! P! Give me that P. Jane Lady, I missed you. Ship post wildcard rebel assault one and two. They are story driven, that's for sure. Star Wars Galaxy is really good until uh, Sony started changing it, trying to make it more like WoW. Co yeah, Kodor is absolutely a story driven game. I think, I like. I think it'd be hard to say that any any Bioware game isn't story driven. How how much you like the that story, it, like may differ greatly, but they're definitely story driven games first and foremost. Jesus Christ, this stage is hard. Oh my God, I did not know you could take out the cement mixers. Can I take out the, this guy. Oh my god, you can! Holy shit! Okay. Alright. I've been wasting my life when I could have been crushing garbage trucks. I could have done so much more. The problem is I'm not picking up any P. And I need my P. Well, I wasn't gonna get that one, certainly. Shit, shit, shit! Oh my god, I did it! Rebel Assault 1, oh no. I've only ever played Rebel Assault 2. I had Rebel Assault 2. I beat Rebel Assault 2. When I was a kid. But it can't be that hard. Oh, fuck. Hello. Oh my god, it's a bulldozer. Ah, oh, it was a bulldozer. Get owned. Oh no, I bounced off of him. You know what? I'd like to wildcard a Star Wars Republic Commando. Okay. I can make you play fun, fun games too. I'm only sometimes evil. This is legit fun. I'm actually really enjoying this. Smashing these cars is so gratifying. Oh, I want that guy. No! That was my own fault. The hubris of ban. Ah, okay. All right. Well, that was that was definitely worth it. Definitely worth a diversion. Good stuff, that one. All right. Star Soldier, your disappointment. Bump and jump, you were not. All right. There we go. I was trying to make a PC port of Sonic 06. The terrorists. Oh man, okay. Hey, it's Robo Warrior! We know that game. <laughs> oh god, we know that game, don't we? Mm. God, why? Satan! Did a week of Garfield ever end up in Nintendo Power? 
Yes. It did. It ended, I, I specifically remember that in the video shorts. So, get good. All right, gang. If you want to see any of these four games, uh, 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 if you want to see any of these three games, not counting Robo Warrior, because I already did my time in that one, put them in now, because I think these, these are the last pages we're getting to tonight. Uh, Rampage. I played Rampage a lot in the arcade. Um, I was terrible at it, though, so hopefully I'll be better at it uh, now. Select either George the Colossal Ape, Lizzie the Giant Lizard, and go on a spree of destruction that would turn Godzilla... Which... There must have been a Rampage 2, because I remember three three monsters. Goals to wipe out the entire United States. The large map lets you keep track of your progress. The area on the map will become black. You need to demolish all the buildings in the city within that area. Find some goodies or protesting resident to eat. You must avoid poisons as you destroy whole metropolises. I thought there were four monsters? I don't even know how many Rampage games there were. Oh, three in the original? Oh, so maybe the NES port didn't have, was missing one. Because they only list two here. Rampage was fun as a kid because they had big monster go smash. And you get to eat people, yeah. They took Ralph out. God damn them. All right, Othello. Zane goes meant to learn a lifetime master. Beautifully simple in his design and gameplay. His board game uh, favors delighted tacticians for more than a century. Uh, it's been faithfully transposed in video. You know what Othello is. And then Spy vs. Spy with pages of Mad Magazine to your NES. And those unequaled usurpers of undercover. The indestructible experts of espionage are on a time secret message. I always like the Spy vs. Spy cartoons. How long until we finally get to a full night problem rage? That one's gonna be a while. That one's way off in the distance. Because that was like late Super Nintendo, I think. All right, well, you know what? Let's get started. Uh, Primal Rage was a lot of fun as a youngster to watch in the arcade. I don't know how much fun it would be to, to play. All right, Rampage and Othello. I'm gonna start with Othello, because I, I think I'd rather, I'd, I'd rather end the evening with Rampage. I, I feel like that's, that, that sounds like a good palate cleanser to me. Huh. There are only four games released for the North American NES. Let's start with O, and this will be the second. You also just not play Othello. I don't really want to see it. Too bad! The coins have spoken. You buy it, you watch it. I remember playing Rampage at a wedding. There was an arcade machine outside the reception room. This is after I stole multiple stogies from the adults. I was just going to town to Rampage as a little kid with some cigars in my mouth. Good times. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. All right, versus computer, I will be black. Uh, easy. 20 minutes? Sure. Name. Ah! ah. Try again. I don't actually know how you play Othello. It's not looking like Shakespeare. <laughs> Listen, spent 20 minutes playing Othello. Don't worry. The computer's gonna beat my ass and then we'll go do something else. Okay, I have no idea how to play Othello. Prefer an NES version of Shakespeare's Othello? Surround enemy pieces to flip them. You put tiles down. There appears to be some weird arcane rules about where you can put tiles, though. Wait, 
I think I see it. Yeah, oh, oh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, sorry. Sorry, I'm a big, I'm a big dumb dumb, but I got it. It's reverse, see if you've heard of that. Actually, you know what, after this one, we're gonna play an extra game that will help explain my confusion. Also, I, I know I'm going to get owned. You don't have to remind me. Is it backgammon? Fuck no, it's not backgammon. What the fuck's wrong with you? Sweet extra board game. Can't wait. It is an extra board game, actually. Mouse trap, what is wrong with you? I always forget Don't Wake Daddy was an actual board game. <laughs> and do not anger father. Yeah, we're gonna play the NES version of Mr. Bucket. Because there's one thing I need right now is balls in my mouth. Game end, push start button. Are you gonna tell me? Oh, okay, then they total it up. I got wrecked. I got fucking destroyed by the easy computer. Well, there you go. All right, now what I'm going to show you is the game that I had when I was a kid that I thought this was. Um, so they made a 7-Up game for the NES. I thought it was, yeah, I was expecting Cool Spot. It's this. And I'm assuming that this is based on a board game with an actual name, but I don't know what it is. Played a Game Boy version of this a lot as a kid. It's an amazing animation for the NES. It is, isn't it? 
Yeah, Cool Spot is a platformer on the Super Nintendo. Not this. Based on board game, avoid the Noid. Jerk ass. Okay, so if you move, you can you can choose to move each of your pieces one square or two squares. If you move one square, it clones itself. If you move two squares, it doesn't. And any piece that you land adjacent to, like the eight squares around it, it will flip. I'm really curious why the graphics are glitching out so bad. What is the game called? It's called Spot. Just Spot. Genuinely impressed the NS can do such smooth animation. It did look really good for the time. <laughs> and yeah, they have unique animations for each direction they go in. Which is pretty cool. fucked up. Oh, you fucked up. Waste a lot of time, though, I assume, is massing some kind of loading? Probably yes. Probably yes. Game's making me thirsty. Why did you do that? The AI must be set on idiot right now. I remember that one. So yeah, if you have a multi-tap, you can actually play this one four players. Or actually, I don't even... Come to think of it, I'm not even sure you need a multi-tap. Guns out so little just loses. Spot cool because of his glasses. Oof. Oof. <laughs> You're actually going to see like all of these unique animations, which is pretty neat. Um, do this one. Boot. I was going that way. Huh, okay. Shocking number of animations in this. And yes, this keeps going until you fill the board. Yeah. 
Shakespeare read any of us spot other than out damn. <laughs> Who has said in before Audish loses? <laughs> yeah, I think I've got too many pieces locked in. Fortunately. Slow tedious march to victory, always the most satisfying kind. Ah, uh, this sucks. All right, I have, to, I have to do the least amount of damage possible. Actually, I come out on top on this. I get more than he does. There we go. Trinkets and baubles. Guess what, you're playing for a stadium of spots. Yellow. Wins! And you get fucking fireworks and shit. It's awesome. What more could you ask for, for it as a child? Product placement, fireworks. And the coolest fucking spots ever doing all their cool ass moves right there in your home TV screen. I think this goes on for some time until you push a button. Okay. California Games beats the shit out of this. So one, okay, so there are options, which I think is kind of cool. Check it out. You, so this means you can turn off the animations. And that means animation's okay. I think that's, that one's just for fun. So you can edit all the stuff in it. Difficulty goes up to five. You can add other players. So an Oracle and Tech Mobile early did Nintendo Power X stole the virtues of Bojax and not really. And this is the other thing, you can actually edit the board that you're gonna play on. So you can make it you can make it different shapes too, which I, I think is pretty cool. So then you can play on a board like this. Surprise design doesn't say drink seven up. For where do you get a nice refreshing Garcy Cola? So yeah. That's Spot. I had that game when I was a kid. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, really. I, I think I thought it was a different game. I think I thought it was a platformer because there, were, there was another one out at the same time. Well, I almost clicked on Rampart, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point. Ah, ah, monster. Yes, Cool Spot does exist. I'm not sure if I thought it was that or what but surprising amount of customization you made that game i forgot to look forgot to look um i want to be oh my god i didn't choose fast enough we're gonna be lizzie san jose ow eat shit Oh, God. Oh, I remember the helicopters now. Fuck those helicopters. They're the worst. All right, you're getting it. This is definitely America, because it's just people leaning out of windows with guns. This building in particular. Oh no, I'm gonna fall! Ah! Flat. Nom 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 nom. 
Got this game because I played the arcade version and wanted to be the wolf, and well, yeah. Womp womp. Oh, come on, I have that. Fuck you. Helio Chopter. Now, this is going well. The game's just quieter, there's no sound effect. It's, it's just quiet. It's just a particularly quiet game, unfortunately. <clears throat> Who is that? Fine fellow there. No, get back here! Come back. I want to devour you. You look delicious. Can I be drunk? I'm gonna be a drunk lizard. This is easier than an arcade game? It kind of feels like it. There's so much food. Rampage isn't the first arcade great to suffer on the home console. Yeah. There we go. This really is America. Okay, I'm not I'm not eating that skull. I can get all the skulls I need from residents. Oh, that's right, they made a Rampage movie, didn't they? For some inexplicable reason. Mmm, drunk lizard. Or not. <coughs> yep. I guess it's really just this one song, huh? This looks like a pretty sturdy bang. Why does the rock slum it so much? I think they just throw a shit ton of money at him. And he likes money. I think he's also enjoying his his image as like family friendly action hero. I think he's gotten rather attached to that. He could be this generation's Arnold, but he does too much garbage. I mean, Arnold did a lot of garbage too. It's just 80s garbage was very different from like 2000s garbage. I honestly, I honestly don't think what. Uh, what The Rock is doing is that different from what Arnold did. It's just we feel differently about movies like that. I mean, fucking Arnold did, like, Twins. And, uh... I had something else in mind. Not Kindergarten Cop. K Kindergarten Cop tricked everybody. Ice to see you. Oh, God. Batman and Robin. Jesus Christ, Batman and Robin. Oh, no, I poisoned myself. Yeah, jingle all the way. There you go. Oh, we turned into a naked lady. I love Nintendo. Continue? Continue, yes? I will continue, no. Alright, we'll do we'll do one as George, and I think that's gonna be it for the night. Boom. Batman and Robin was atrocious. Yeah, it was. Like even even adolescent me wasn't having that shit. And I and I loved honestly I loved uh uh the the the, the, the Batman Forever. It was so weird and technicolor and everything. Man, I barely remember George Clooney as Batman, too. What a terrible, unremarkable Batman he was. Not seeing Forever Batman and Robin. I think Forever's good. I think I think Forever is legitimately good. Val Kilmer was a solid Batman. Jim Carrey was Jim Carrey. Um, 
Tommy Tommy Lee Jones surprisingly goes all in on being Two Face, which is is kind of hard to imagine now, since he like if, if if he can be seen in anything now, he is like absolutely phoning it in. Disagree, George Clooney was a terrible remark, terrible remarkable Batman. Okay, all right, I think we can agree to disagree on that, <laughs> since it was stated so eloquently. Clooney was a good Bruce Wayne and a terrible Batman. Oh, that, that, okay. That's an interesting take. I can see that, though. I can see that. Returns is great. DeVito is a great pet. Returns is great just because it's so creative. Like, there's so much interesting shit going on in that movie. And it doesn't, it doesn't really shy away from, like, the horrific elements, either. I know nobody has ever even tried talking about Val Kilmer back. He was just there. He was he was serviceable. He wasn't he wasn't memorable like Keaton. Yeah, interesting shit in Pfeiffer. Yeah, there you go. Definitely feel like Rampage has to be done multiplayer. There's not really a point. I mean, there's a point, just not terribly compelling. <laughs> Punch things. And the other thing too is this is so much this is so much lower key than the arcade version. There's just not a whole lot going on here, really. So. Yes, and it returns out Christopher Walken's a villain. Pretty solid villain, too. No, don't fall in the water. Fuck. That was bad. If you the building bombs, you spit fire. You do spit fire, yeah, but it's it's very it's very small and like barely noticeable. What the fuck is that? Okay, that was health. That's good. <laughs> Punch. I hate how these assholes are just throwing garbage out of their window, and it does like it ends up doing like a ton of damage to you. Like, the guy's shooting guns, I understand. Ah, oh, I fucking ate the poison. I didn't want the poison. No, I didn't want the poison, dickhead. I am specifically trying to avoid the poison, and you're making me eat the poison. It was not my choice. Pee Wee Herman had a, had a cameo as uh, Penguin's dad? Really? I don't remember Returns very well. I remember the original pretty clearly. Um, I think I actually remember Forever cl more clearly, and I only saw that one like once. Forever left a big impression on me. Just the just the style of it was very very striking to me. Yeah, see, I I just I breathed some fire, but it was pretty unremarkable. It was not exciting. Oh, and it hurts you too. That sucks. Okay, we gotta. Okay, we gotta. We gotta end this. Stop shooting me, dickhead. Ah! Wow, that does so much damage if you fall off of. Oh, I got me. Fucko. Turns out eating dynamite is, pain is painful. Oh, I just. I. Oh, I didn't continue fast enough. That's why. All right. We'll go, we'll go one more round. Puncho, puncho. Burbank. Don't destroy Burbank. I like Burbank. That's where like the last Bob's big boy in existence is. Wait, now it's now it's lightninging on me? Come on, man. No, get the lady. Get the fucking late. There we go. I knew the lady was good.
What was that? Hunt DeVito reprised the Penguin role for the modern DC movies, but act like Frank Reynolds from Always Sunny. <laughs> so then, I started blasting. <laughs> oh my god, I think I destroyed California. Yeah, get fucked. Can I offer you an egg in this trying time? <laughs> I want the modern DC movies to stop, please. The new, um, the new, uh, Suicide Squad movie actually looks like it could be free, pretty fun. Because, you know, it seems like they're actually trying to make a fun DC movie instead of a dark, shitty, fucked up one. Oh god, it's a missile. Oh, fuck you. Surprisingly good Danny DeVito penguin impression. Probably because I'm going to look like him in another, like, 20 years or so. I'm going to bald, shrink down, get extra round. Oh, come on, asshole. Punch. I mean, I don't even need to blow up your building for you. You're going you're gonna to do it yourselves. There we go. They had James Gunn to do it, so it'll actually be a fun movie. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Las Vegas. This is not Vegas. Didn't didn't the Arcade Rampage actually have, like, kind of unique-looking buildings, too? Man, this is ultimately kind of a disappointment. You gonna go ahead and take off? Thanks for the stream. My pleasure. My pleasure. I think we're... Yeah, we're dead anyway. Womp womp. Like Aquaman, Shazam, the movies everyone's liked, and then DC decided we didn't actually like that. Yeah, I could use more than like one and a half songs too. That that would be kind of nice. Ah oh, well. All right. Well, that, as they say, is that. <sighs> well, gang. I don't know why they don't just make more. Uh, DC anime universe stuff and release in theaters. Everyone loved Batman the anime series. I think the problem is like getting getting together people that can actually do that. We did, yeah, we made a lot of progress. We're on we're on page 80, 82. Out of like just over a hundred. So I think we'll be right back to this on Thursday. I think we'll we'll almost certainly finish this uh this volume and then we'll have some time to do some other random NES stuff, I think. Um, I might go back to the, uh, the import slash ROM hack list and start working through that stuff. I have Saturday scheduled as like full on import ROM hack, uh, night. So, and there's some kind of substantial looking stuff on there. We might do that then. We'll see. Thanks for stream. Congrats on getting this far on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. It feels like quite an accomplishment. So GDQ is speedrunning Star Wars Republic Commander right now. Nice. Yes, I think I watched Tino play most of that. That seemed pretty cool. So, all right. So schedule. Um, tomorrow night back on Legend of Mana. Sorry about missing out on last night. Uh, Thursday. Hopefully we'll wrap this up with a bunch more interesting NES games to play. Friday, since I missed Monday, will be a remedial uh, Legend of Mana night because I don't want to. I don't want to do just one Legend of Mana night a week. I feel like I was going to stretch it out way too much. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, Saturday, probably imports and hacks and stuff. When did you finally get home for the stadium? Uh, it was after 11. It was after 11. The game, the game ran on towards 10. The game ran after 10. And then, yeah, it was, it was worth it, though. It was a lot of fun. And the ninth inning was something to see. It was, uh, it was super exciting. So. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it immensely. My girls, my girls enjoyed it too. I was actually relieved because the last time we went, we, we took her to a baseball game. Uh, my, my younger daughter was too young and my older daughter was just kind of bored the whole time. But this time, my younger daughter uh, had the patience for it. She liked the exciting parts and my older daughter was actually getting into it. Um, so she might end up a, uh, a baseball fan in the future. That may be pretty cool. Not Dodgers, Angels. <laughs> 
We are we are we are Angels fans in this house because of Otani. Um, but they were playing the Red Sox, and the Red Sox beat them to very little surprise. Angels versus Jason. <laughs> yeah, Jason won. Jason is winning that matchup. Um, so yeah, that's the schedule. Don't forget to throw in for the August Community Night, um, and we'll do we'll do something for the for the July Community Night. Uh, we'll see what's going on with that. Um, and yeah, I am looking for nominations for our next game after Legend of Mana, and I'm looking for story driven stuff, stuff with good or interesting or compelling stories. So, Dustin, be a baseball fan, is there a stronger curse in existence? No. <laughs> Um, so yeah, think about that. Put in board nominations tonight or whenever else I see you. But for now, for now, let me go send you along your way to raid somebody. How's about? How's about? How's about? How's about? Wait, I saw something. How's about? Did anyone nominate Disco Elysium yet? Uh, I don't believe so, but someone probably should. Speaking of story-driven games, I think I will send you over to Kiwi. She is playing Mass Effect. Looks like Mass Effect 2. Because she's scanning planets. I love scanning planets. There's a story of Mass Effect, supposedly. I got, I got somewhere in the story, and the story told me I was stupid, so I was like, nope, not playing this anymore. All right, gang. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Thank you for joining me for another rollicking NES night. This was there was some garbage in here tonight, but not too bad. Not too bad. Um, looking forward to wrapping up this volume on uh, Thursday, and looking forward to getting back to some Legend of Mana tomorrow night. Hopefully, I'll see you on one of those nights. And until then, as always, y'all take care. Bye, everybody.